Game Day. Winner of Best Sports Coverage in the 2024 Radio Academy ARIA Awards. Game Day Live on Talk Sports. It's now or never, and City sees the Premier League power at just the right time. That's what we wanted, but to have experience. A few years ago against Aston Villa, what happened in 73 minutes, City to down. It's Manchester City 3, Aston Villa 2. Look, I could not ask more. Knowing that if they beat West Ham, they will be champions of England for an unprecedented fourth straight year. Bowen! That's the one he wanted! Gives it to Trossard! There's the second goal, there's the clinching goal. What a ball by Declan Rice! And if you want to win championship, then you have to rely on something else, the way you compete, the way you defend. All we can do is what we've done is keep Manchester City honest. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, this to give Everton the lead! he does down the middle the last team to come back from behind to nick it at the death on the final day Arsenal 89 and all that but Thomas charging through the midfield Thomas it's up for grabs now Thomas right at the end Our commentary of Arsenal, Everton is coming right up on Talk Sport. Let's get the lineup. All thanks to Betfair. Sam Matapace is at the Emirates Stadium. Just the one change from Arsenal. It's a big change as well. No Bukayo Saka this afternoon. He's not in the squad. So Trossard goes to the right and Martinelli will play from the left. It's David Raya in goal. White, Saliba, Gabriel and Tomiyasu the back four. Partey, Rice and Erdogan in midfield. Trossard and Martinelli flanking Havertz in attack. Everton unchanged, Pickford is their goalkeeper, Coleman, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Young, Garner, Gay, Anana and McNeil behind Decoure in the 10 and Calvert-Lewin leading the line. And here at the Etihad we are just over five minutes away from kickoff. a reminder of the teams from Alex Crook. And the pre-match news here dominated by Jarrod Bowen's absence from the West Ham squad due to illness. No such problems for City, who barring goalkeeper Edison have a clean bill of health. That means Kevin De Bruyne has overcome the ankle issue suffered at Spurs on Tuesday, while Jeremy Doku starts in place of Kovacic. Ortega is the goalkeeper. Scott Carlson among the subs. Walker, Diaz, Akanji and Guardiol in front of him. Then comes Rodri in midfield. Doku, Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne and Foden in behind Erling Haaland up front. West Ham, Brian Mavropanos and Chris well for Bowen and Ogbonna who drops to the bench. Ariola is their goalkeeper. Zuma, Mavropanos and Cresswell the back three. Soufal and Emerson the wing backs with Walprouse and Sochek in midfield. And Kudus and Pakitar in behind Mikhail Antonio up front. At the Etihad, they are ready for a title party. It's Man City against West Ham. Well, those lineups brought to you by Betfair, the official betting partner of Talk Sports Premier League coverage that's all thanks to Betfair 18 plus begambleaware.org let's bring in Darren Bent who's at the Emirates for co-commentary this afternoon on Talk Sport and I can tell you Darren I've just had a message from a City fan saying he's scared another City fan just stopped behind me a moment ago and was very very nervous I, th- I suspect that until you actually get the job done there will be nerves there will be fear yeah, but I mean, I guess from their perspective, at least it's in their own hands. I mean, I can't see them dropping points, but I can understand the nerves. And for a club that's been there so many times, I find it quite strange. But listen, hey, you can sense the nerves in here. I mean, there's Arsenal fans near me and Sam that are waving West Ham shirts about. There's one in front of me, 28, Thomas Tuchek. So they really are praying. But as long as Arsenal take care of their business today and win the game, then the rest, they can't control it. If they win their game and Man City somehow drop points, fair play. But as long as Arsenal do their job, that's all that matters. And I guess I heard earlier, when we crossed you before, I heard Arsenal fans singing the Bubbles song. So they have become West Ham fans for the day. They'll be relying on something here, and who knows what could happen. Maybe like Tuesday, an injury to a keeper, and Scott Carson has to come on early doors for Manchester City. There could be all sorts of drama this afternoon. First goal in either of these games could be absolutely crucial, just to heat that little bit of pressure on. Remember, if Arsenal win and City draw... Arsenal take the title a City win and it is their title as a huge Manchester City crest is unfurled in the middle of the pitch it's way beyond the barriers of the centre circle it is gigantic as this sky blue filled ground under sky blue skies prepares for what is possibly going to be 
a title party. Quick word in Scotland because St Johnston on two up at Motherwell. Half time there and half time Ross County one Aberdeen one means Ross County are currently in the relegation playoff place with 45 minutes of the season left. The teams are on their way. Game day exclusive coming to you from Manchester City, the home of the champions. But we will be saying that a couple of hours from now. City win and they're champions again. But if they don't win, then it's up for grabs for Arsenal to take the title on this, the final day. Updates from here at City West Ham. Commentary from Arsenal Everton with former England striker Darren Bent alongside Sam Matterface. You might not believe it. They might not believe it. But what if football history is littered with moments you never saw coming? 93-20, Wigan in the FA Cup final, Leicester winning the league, Arsenal coming back from 11 points behind in 1998. And the day that Blackburn won the title because West Ham drew with a club from Manchester. And where would we have been right now if Son had scored? What if? Well, if it happens, it will happen here. Alex Crook is at Manchester City, so you won't miss anything on TalkSport. There's live commentary on Spurs trying to hold on to fifth place on TalkSport 2. And the games at the Amex, Brentford, Kenilworth Road and Anfield are on the TalkSport app. The final day always delivers every significant strike, every dip and climb on the roller coaster that is the Premier League is here on Talk Sport, where the football comes first. Arsenal in red with white shorts, Everton in blue, and the Emirates in fine voice. in charge of Manchester City's comeback from 2-0 down against Villa to win the title on the final day. The VAR is Stuart Atwell. Arsenal shooting from right to left in the first half towards the north bank. They usually like to shoot the other way at the start of the game. And Everton headed towards the goal away to our right. A small band of their supporters in the corner knowing that safety is secured for them. And even though for a large part of the season it didn't look like it was certain, they will be playing in the top flight for a 71st consecutive season. The players take the knee to indicate that there is no room for racism. Darren Bent is alongside me in the commentary box. Mikel Arteta says no radio required, no app, not for him anyway. The Arsenal fans will let him know what's happening elsewhere. But in a sense, it's irrelevant, right? All Arsenal can do is win, and they have to. They have the error, Sam. Um, as you said, there's no radio required. You know you get the job done. You win your game and hopefully results go your way, certainly in that game up at the Etihad. But it's in the fans are in great form at the minute. I mean, Arsenal... Here's a shot from the edge of the area, straight away from Kai Havertz, who just picked the ball up 28 seconds into the game, right on the edge of the box, left-footed shot, which goes over the top of the crossbar. Great start there from Arsenal. But you're right, in this 4-3-3 that Arsenal are going to be playing, that fluid system with Kai Havertz playing that false nine who's done it really well and Everton adopting that kind of 4-4-1-1 formation I expect the three for Everton Onana Adjusege Decore real engine in the middle of the park there so Arsenal are going to have to watch them well the first thought is is that Martinelli is playing on the right hand side so often we see him pop up on the left but Trossard has made that position his own in the last couple of months and in for Saka today Martinelli is Martinelli is a like for like replacement sun shining here at the Emirates, which is jam-packed. There's already been a goal at Turf Moor. John Dunn. 90 seconds gone, Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest won. Chris Wood against his former club, steering home from close range. A right-sided cross from Anthony and Langer. Burnley nil, Forest won. Well, Burnley uh, behind at home. They have a terrible home record this season. 
And Nottingham Forest are in good shape towards the end of the campaign, leading by a goal to nil. They haven't started at Manchester City yet, which means that they're already a minute and a half behind, which really and truly shouldn't be happening. They should be kicking off at exactly the same time. That usually is coordinated, and that's a little bit naughty. Here's Erdegaard down the right-hand side, moves into the edge of the penalty area, gets it onto his left foot, little back heel into Declan Rice. Declan Rice can't receive it. It's taken away into the left fullback position and cleared away by Everton, away to our right-hand side. Newcastle can finish 6, 7, 4, 8 today, depending on their results and the result of the Chelsea game. Let's find out. About an early goal at the GTAC, Oli Klink. They're behind Sam Brentford 1, Newcastle 0. Within two minutes, Ivan Tony has put Brentford ahead and Burmo was released down the right, played it across goal and there was Tony to tap it home in what could be his last game for Brentford. Three minutes gone, Brentford 1, Newcastle 0. Yep, and that's a, a big goal for him because he's played quite a lot of games since coming back from injury and yet hasn't been able to get on the score sheet with any degree of regularity it was his worst league run without a goal since 2015-16 when he went 15 matches without a goal Ivan Tony on the score sheet Brentford 1 Newcastle United 0 ball out over on the right hand side with Arsenal and Thomas Partey has it just inside opposition territory, moves it out towards the far side and Erdegaard, who gets up to the edge of the area, slips it into Martinelli in a bit of space, pulls it through the six-yard box, might come through to Tommy Yasu, but Idrissa Garnagay got there first and managed to clear and block the effort. Yeah, really, really good play there from Arsenal as well. The overlap run from Ben White as well, cutting it back into a really good area. And then Tommy Asu coming onto it, but Arsenal started off really, really well. Trossard on this left-hand side, keeping it really wide. Just trying to tempt Coleman to come out of that little central area there and create that gap between himself and Tarkovsky. But Arsenal, listen, a big pressure game like that. You want them to come out fast. They've, they've done that. It's about can they test Pickford. Goals already going in around the country. Brentford lead against Newcastle. They've only just started at the Etihad Stadium. But there's already a goal for Alex Crook. And the champions in front inside two minutes. And who else but Phil Foden, their player of the season. It is another spectacular strike. He picked up the ball inside the D on the edge of the penalty area. And he killed it beautifully beyond Ariona into the top corner. The title pass. Party starts early. It is Manchester City 1, West Ham 0. Goal 26 of the season for Phil Foden puts Manchester City in command of the title race after just a minute. Here is Havertz down the right side into the area, trying to pull it back through the six-yard box, cleared away by Pickford, and it's out for a corner over on the far side. Manchester City are going to be champions at this moment in time. All they need to do is win, and they're already in front. How dispiriting is that for this crowd, Darren Bent? That certainly is a blow to the stomach. Arsenal start off this game really well, but that news will start to filter through. I think the Everton fans had a little ripple, to be fair, because they've obviously heard the news that City have gone one up, but again, all Arsenal can do is take care of their own business, win this game, and hopefully the rest takes care of itself. What a start to the afternoon. City in front, Brentford in front. Bad news for Newcastle. We'll go back there in just a second as the ball gets curled into the second, uh, the six-yard area, cleared away off the head of Calvert-Lewin out towards the right side but Arsenal come back down into the penalty area with Erdegaard then it's Rice edge of the area he crosses to the far post headed down it's narrowly wide from Tommy Yasu it's a brilliant header Darren Bent but it's just off target do you know what he did everything right Tommy Yasu really good movement around the back post and Declan Rice with a lovely kind of weighted ball where all Tommy Yasu's got to do is come onto it and if he hits the target he scores he misses in the right area. He tries to go back across goal and he just misses that far post. What you really need is one of the other players to come in at that back post and it'd be a tap in for someone. But I mean, it's a free header from three yards. He should hit the target. But I think Arsenal's two best chances so far this first half have come to Tommy Asu. Goal chalked off at the G-Tech. Oli Klink. Yeah, Brentford nil, Newcastle nil. The goal ruled out for an offside in the build-up against Matthias Jensen, who had initially released and Burmo, who got the assist. Brentford nil, Newcastle nil. So it's Burnley nil, Forest one. Chris Wood with his first goal for six weeks. He's the 14th of the season. Uh, Manchester City lead West Ham by goal to nil. Phil Foden. That means at this moment in time, Manchester City have got an unassailable lead at the top of the pile. They will win the title. Arsenal chasing his nil-nil here. We played six minutes on Talk Sport. I'll go through the table as it changes throughout the course of the afternoon. Here is Garner out to the right, looking for Coleman. He moves into the right wing position. The ball goes out of play on this near side. And it's away for a throw-in to Everton, who haven't seen much action in the opponent's half so far. It is the second top scorers in the league against the second bottom on that list. And if Arsenal are looking for more omens, they are playing a team that have lost 
their final game of a Premier League season more often than anyone else. Do you know, Sam, sometimes it's hard for Arsenal because a lot of people would have looked at this fixture and thought to themselves, um, do you know what? It's Everton, they've just about survived. But the fact they've played with no, this freedom, it makes it difficult. Here is Gay, just short of the edge of the penalty area. Plays it left where it's collected by Anana. Anana, tall and lean, plays it out to the wide left position. A low cross from Dwight McNeil, who's been very good this season. Misjudged by Partey, who then had to readjust his body and tuck it behind. I just wonder, if you're a player, I was listening to it earlier on uh, yesterday, to uh, Emma Hayes talking about the, the final day of the season, saying players know, they find out some way when goals go in. If these players know already that Phil Foden has put Manchester City in front, does it affect them? Do they lose a little bit of concentration and edge? Not so much concentration, but just a little bit of hope. Because look, it's, the atmosphere before kickoff was incredible. If you have a look now, it's quite flat. Not, there's no really one singing, everyone's sitting in their seats. So as players, you kind of feel it sensing through, coming through. Here's the corner, delivered to the far post, headed into the air by Tarkovsky. Out comes David Rye, the Golden Glove winner, and juggles with it and gets it. But I think there was... An offside flag in the build-up to it anyway. Now, Arsenal wanted to release the ball quickly and get it up towards the near side, but the flag and the whistle had already indicated that they were going to give a free kick. So they do that away to our right-hand side. Seven and a half minutes gone. You're listening to TalkSport on the final day of the Premier League season. Arsenal nil, Everton nil, Brentford nil, Newcastle nil, Tony's goal disallowed, Brighton nil, Manchester United nil, Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest one, Chris Wood with a goal, Chelsea nil, Bournemouth nil, Palace nil, Aston Villa nil, Liverpool nil, Wolves nil, Luton nil, Fulham nil, Manchester City 1, West Ham 0 and Sheffield United 0. Tottenham Hotspur 0. The table at the moment, Manchester City top of the pile. And they will have 91 points as a result of that. And Arsenal just behind them. But at the moment, not in front against Everton. Ball flicked away by Garner, taken down by... Dekure back to Garner again in the right full-back position and he looks to clear McCann. Do you know what, Sam? He said something really interesting there about Manchester City currently sitting on 91 points. That's the standards that they've set because there were times where you didn't have to get to 90 points to win Premier League titles. Manchester City have been that relentless over the years on certainly under Pep Guardiola that you're now saying you have to get to 90 points to even stand the chance of winning a league title. Well, if, if Arsenal get 89 points this season and that won't be enough. It's remarkable, isn't it, really? They need to beat Everton today and hope that City don't beat West Ham in order to seal the title for the first time in 20 years. Goal at Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace taking on Aston Villa. Jake Robson. Seven on the clock. Palace won. Villa nil. Mateta with yet another goal. Easy as you like. Played through by Elise and he slammed it in. Palace won. Villa nil. That's his 17th goal of the season. Villa have already guaranteed a top four finish. Palace have an outside shout of a top ten finish. They need to win and hope that Brighton and Bournemouth don't in order for that to happen. They're in front against Aston Villa, whose job is done. Here is Kai Havertz for Arsenal, whose job isn't done yet. Trying to take it down the left-hand side of the penalty area. He's dispossessed by Coleman. It goes out of play and away for a throw in the shade, away to our left-hand side. Manchester City top, Arsenal second, Liverpool third, Aston Villa fourth. Those places at this moment in time not going to change. Tottenham Hotspur fifth, Chelsea in sixth, Newcastle and Manchester United both on a point uh, from today's game at this moment in time. Still level on points, 58 at this moment in time. But Manchester United can leapfrog them if they win and Newcastle don't. And on the bottom of the table, Luton need a huge goal swing in order to avoid relegation. But with Nottingham Forest taking the lead in their game, what looked absolutely impossible earlier looks like climbing the north face of the Iger without any supplies at this moment in time. 11 minutes gone. Nil-nil here. They're a bit behind us at the Eddie Hood Stadium where Phil Foden has already scored his 26th goal of the season. And Pep Guardiola talking about Phil Foden this week said, we've seen glimpses before, now we see the truth. What a season he has had. Ball on the halfway line. Everton have it given away by Gay and picked up by Martinelli Erdegaard finds Rice who steams down the inside right channel gets to the edge of the penalty tries to take on Anana and he sends out one of those huge long raking limbs to pinch the ball away and tuck it out towards the far side great tackle there from Onana um, given away and here's Rice edge of the area left footed strike down towards the goalkeeper's left easy save he scuffed that actually after a mistake just inside the box they gave the ball away cheaply there Everton 
It was picked up left side of the penalty area. Bradway fired it straight at an Arsenal player. It came back to the edge of the box. And Havertz, who had set up Declan Rice, just peeled away to the left-hand side. Rice thought he was finding the corner, but Jordan Pickford was alert to it. Do you know what Sam, it was his first touch? His first touch didn't sit him in front of him. It was almost behind him. And on his weaker foot as well, it's always going to be a difficult to get a strike off. So if his touch is in front of him, then he gets more of a clean contact on it. But again, Everton giving Arsenal an opportunity. Havertz has it left-hand side. Just had the pace to get beyond Tarkovsky there. And manages to uh, keep Arsenal on the front foot. Still nil-nil the score. It has been a thrilling Premier League season. Already we've seen a record broken for the most goals in a 38-game Premier League season another 14 goals today and uh, that would surpass the total uh, from 92-93 which is a 42 game campaign of 1,222 goals so yeah we have been scoring goals for fun I think they're averaging over three and a half goals per game so far Erdegaard has it over on the far side in the sunshine left footed drips the ball towards the far post looking for Havertz headed away by Coleman who's inside the penalty area chased down by Garner and Havertz still keeps hold of it plays it against the defender and works it to Rice who keeps it alive Trossard takes it back into the box now he's got four blue shirts around him one of those is Tarkovsky who manages to prod it away it's cleared to halfway Calvert-Lewin thinks he should have a foul so does Sean Dyche referee says play on to the Etihad the latest from Talk Sports Alex Grook Still Manchester City 1, West Ham nil. Phil Foden with a spectacular goal inside two minutes to settle the nerves here. And it's been total City domination since then. Kevin De Bruyne twice testing Areola in the West Ham goal. Seems a matter of time before they score again. It's Manchester City 1, West Ham nil. And that's bad news for Arsenal because they need Manchester City to drop points today if they're to have any chance of winning the title here's Erdegaard for them into the back to edge of the area Trossard flashed across the face of goal an unorthodox save from Pickford sees the ball flip behind and it goes out for a corner away to our left hand side really clever play for Marshall there and Odegaard picking up the ball in that right hand side it's the way Trossard and Havertz are both peeling off onto Seamus Coleman so one of them's always free and again it happened just before that and the ball didn't quite get there but that one was a really good contact from Trossard but it was it took a little nick and then a good save from Pickford but this left-hand side for me is where Arsenal look most dangerous going forward for sure. Nil nil the score. Rice has just seen the uh, ball be re-spotted in the quadrant and then pulls his short up right into his groin and then looks at the ball before distributing the corner in towards that crowded, congested penalty area. They're so good from set pieces. It's towards the back post and Pickford comes out, haymakers the ball, Alexander Usyk style, out towards the far side. Martinelli keeps it alive. Then it's back with Saliba. Back down the right with Martinelli again. He gets to the right angle of the penalty area. Lays it off towards Erdogan. His cross into the box. A good one. Havertz gets up there. He glances. Takes a couple of deflections. Almost came through on the edge of the six-yard box to Gabriel. And then was cleared away by Everton. Goal at Bramall Lane. Adam Bridge. Sheffield United nil. Spurs one. Completely against the run of play. It's seven for the season now for Kulisevsky. A left-footed shot from the left side of the box. In off. The inside of the post pass, following him in his last game for Sheffield United. Sheffield United nil, Spurs one. Tottenham only need to avoid defeat to finish fifth. If they lose, they will slip into six in the table if Chelsea manage to win their game. But at the moment, they are in front. And there's live commentary of that game with Joe Shannon and Scott Minto, Minto over on Talk Sport 2 from Bramall Lane at this moment in time. Nil-nil here. And Arsenal have had a bright start. They've been completely dominant in terms of possession so far Pickford's made a couple of saves already but it's still goalless here's Martinelli lovely ball past Brantway into the air right foot his shot comes back off the goalkeeper and makes a good save and he can't turn in the rebound and it goes out to the far side and Tarkovsky will clear it's a lovely little body swerve and movement and trick from Martinelli to set up the chance he drove it at the goalkeeper who parried it and then he couldn't convert the rebound Everton break at the other end. Decore trying to get the better of Saliba. Saliba falls over, then dives in on Calvert Lewin, gives away a free kick just short of the D. What a chance for Arsenal at the other end. Just very quickly, Darren Ben. Great chance. I mean, the ball, the, the chance comes about from a great pass from Ben White with the outside of his foot. He just rolls it in between the fullback Ashley Young and uh, Jamrath Bradway on that side. And Martinelli's in full flight mode. He goes past the first defender, and it's a really, really good save from Jordan Pickford because he does the right thing. He goes across him. Pickford gets down and makes a save, and the rebound nearly comes back to him. But he does really well defensively. Um, Bradway there, but great play from Martinelli. Goal at Turf Moor. John Dunn. 
Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest 2, it's another for Chris Wood, fortunate this one, Ryan Yates with a shot from the edge of the box, deflected off the former Burnley striker and into the back of the net, 2 in 16 minutes, Burnley nil, Forest 2. Big goal at Stamford Bridge, let's get there for Charlotte Richardson. Chelsea 1, Bournemouth nil. Moise Caicedo puts the host ahead, a spectacular goal from the halfway line into an empty net as Bournemouth goalkeeper Neto was forced out of his area to deal with the first phase of play, breakthrough for the host, Chelsea 1, Bournemouth nil. That's the first Chelsea goal for Moise's Caicedo who puts Maritza Pochettino's team in the lead it's a free kick for Everton taken by Calvert-Lewin and cracked straight into the wall right on the edge of the box someone got that full in the face and has gone down as a result of it might well have been Gabriel actually do you know what I like Dominic Calvert-Lewin as a centre forward but I don't think I've ever seen him score a free kick ever and especially from that range 25 yards I mean his technique was all wrong straight run up I looked at Dwight McNeil it looked perfect for a left footer but he took it as well and it slapped Gabriel straight in the face so chop opportunity gone here are the latest scores on this final day of the Premier League season. Arsenal nil, Everton nil, Brentford nil, Newcastle nil, Brighton nil, Manchester United nil, Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest two. Troy Deeney in the sun yesterday called Burnley and Sheffield United's approach in particular borderline ignorant. Uh, realistically, they've come nowhere near to competing this season. Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. Palace 1-0 up against Aston Villa. Liverpool nil, Wolves nil on Klopp's final day as Liverpool boss. Luton nil, Fulham nil, Man City lead 1-0 against West Ham and Sheffield United nil. Tottenham 1 is the latest scoreline from Bramall Lane. It means at this moment uh, Manchester City win the title, Arsenal second, Liverpool third, Villa fourth, Tottenham stay in fifth, Chelsea in sixth, Newcastle seventh, and Manchester United will finish in their lowest position in the Premier League era. That's if it stays as it is, and it never does on the final day of the season. Here is Dwight McNeil trying to slalom through the packed Arsenal midfield. It breaks to the left-hand side where anana has got it for Everton. A step over by Gay allows De Cure to ping the ball down the right side for Coleman. Coleman to the edge of the penalty area. Left-footed cross into the box, headed away by Partey, and it's out towards this near side. Partey's been a massive part of Arsenal's success over the last couple of months of the season where they've almost been winning every single match. They've been in terrific form in 20. 24, 15 wins out of 17 Premier League matches and they still probably won't end the title. No, they've been outstanding, Thomas Partey. That, just that anchor in the middle of the park. We saw Jorginho do it for a little while. He's probably the master at it. Here is uh, Garner Gay, dispossessed on the edge of the penalty area, but it comes to Anana, who then tries to thread it through. And then Michael Oliver gets in the way of a promising attack for Arsenal after the move broke down with Everton, giving it cheaply away on the edge of the penalty area. There was a quick reversal of fortunes and Arsenal had numbers over and were ready to steam forward and the referee just had his body position all wrong couldn't skip over the ball do you know, do you know what Sam he's done Arsenal a favour there because the set, the layoff from Kai Havertz was going behind I think it was Declan Rice who was bombing in and Dwight McNeil was just coming off the blind side and he would have picked it up so if anything Michael Oliver's done them a favour because they could have been facing a counter I think he needs to do a little bit more yoga and hip workouts yeah. <laughs> he's not moving as freely as I think he would like to there he's uh, Michael Oliver, problem for Idrissa Garnagay, who is down on the floor, down away to our right-hand side. He uh, took a little knock, a tumble after a collision with Havertz, and as a result of that, we've got a brief delay in the game. Everton are pretty stubborn. They possess a top-four defence that's conceded just 49 goals. Only the top three sides have conceded fewer, and from open play, only City have conceded fewer goals. And there is a goal at the Etihad. Alex Crook. And it's a second for City, a second for Phil Foden. Start tying those ribbons on the trophy. Jeremy Doku raiding down the left-hand side. He cut the cross back. And Foden from just inside the area this time expertly guides the ball into the bottom left-hand corner. No more than City deserve. It's been like a shooting gallery for Ariola in the West Ham goal. Foden at the double and surely the first step for City towards a back-to-back -to -back league and FA Cup double. It is Manchester City 2, West Ham 0. Well, they were 14-1 to 1 on with the bookmakers this morning to beat West Ham United. But, I mean, I didn't expect it to all be over in 18 minutes. I didn't either, but this is Manchester City. This is their time. We know what they're like. We've seen them do it before. They're relentless when it comes to this stage of the season and certainly having to win games that they must. Um, but all Arsenal, again, all Arsenal can do is, I mean, they've had a lot of possession. They haven't created that one clear-cut chance yet, but just keep chances.
Here's Rice down the left-hand side trying to get to the edge of the box. Plays it against the on-rushing Abdelou Decore. And it goes out for a corner. We do now have a goal at the GTEC Stadium. Here's Talk Sports Ali Klink. Big goal for Newcastle. Brentford nil. Newcastle won. Harvey Barnes has put them in front. Lovely ball in from the right from Bruno Guimaraes. And there was Barnes to head it into the back of the net. And their push for Europe is on. Brentford nil. Newcastle won. Absolutely. What they really want is uh, for Manchester City next week to win the FA Cup. If that happens, then there will be OK. Corner into the near post, headed away by Calvert-Lewin. There was a bit of pressure on him as he went up for it. Might have been a push on Branthwaite, but a free kick has been given. Newcastle United, who uh, spot Eddie Howe, said he will look back on the campaign as what might have been. Frustrated they didn't ram home their Euro place in midweek. Seventh, of course, may not be enough if Manchester United were to win the FA Cup next season, uh, next weekend. But... They are up to seventh at this moment in time and holding Manchester United very much at bay. If they were to win, Manchester United cannot finish above them because of the goal difference uh, that Newcastle have over Manchester United. Manchester United's goal difference is absolutely abysmal, by the way. They're in the minus category. That's never happened to them before. Mm. Yeah, they've looked really toothless this year, Manchester United. It's not, not been a successful season by them by any stretch of the imagination. Eighth place for, for club, obviously, <laughs> with their history, simply not good enough. Nope. Arsenal nil, Everton nil, live on Chalk Sport with now. And don't forget, with now, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Chelsea versus Bournemouth. Live right now, no contract, search now sports. Here is uh, Ben White chipping the ball into Havertz down the right-hand side, looking for the run of the German. Didn't quite get there. I think Havertz will be the leading striker for Germany in the European Championship when we get there in June. Opening game and all the rest of the games live on the Talk Sport network. He'll be involved in that. And lots of issues in the England squad in terms of those who are suffering with injury at the moment. Bakayo Saka, the latest of those, he's not involved today because of an injury picked up at Old Trafford last Sunday. The England training squad, an extended training squad, will be announced on Tuesday during a live show with Darren Bent and Adrian Durham, one o'clock on Tuesday. Here's Havertz into the area again, headed down back to his goalkeeper by Ashley Young. Talking of... European coverage. He's coming with us to the uh, to the Euros, isn't he, Ashley Young? Yeah, I mean, I'm, surpri- I'm not surprised he's still going. Actually, to be fair, because playing with him, he was always the fittest. Is that it- you? Did you do that deal? Did you? Is he your mate? No, I would like to take credit for that, but I think Gabby was the one who, who ah. ma- managed to reel him in. There you are, Agent Agbon Lahore. About time he contributed. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he will be contributing a little bit later. That is for sure. No, he- listen. I tell you what. If you listen to that uh, phone in. That those two boys do it's great value mm. and it will be on tonight 03717 you'll be able to speak to them straight after we finish with all of the pomp and circumstance at the moment it looks like coming from the Etihad Stadium they lead Manchester City by two goals to nil against West Ham and it's nil-nil between Arsenal and Everton it means the title is going to Manchester City and this game isn't a foregone conclusion. Everton have had the better of Arsenal in the last seven meetings. Four wins. Most of those have come at Goodison Park. Ball out towards the right-hand side. Flicked down by Martinelli into the path of Erdogan. As Arsenal come on the attack, it's uh, nudged back to his own goalkeeper by Ashley Young and then cleared out to the far side by McNeil. And then up to uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin who holds it up. Played back to McNeil. Into Decore Combines well with Calvert-Lewin. Just a yard in from the touchline over on the Everton left. He moves up the field, then delays, turns and guides it back into Anana. And they will look to build again Everton. Nil-nil, 25 gone. Everton are playing with a real freedom. Now, I know that comes with they're not fighting relegation in the final day of the season, um, as I've had to do the last couple of seasons, but they look playing with real freedom. They're looking real confident. Defensively, they look really compact, really tight. And it's going to be a hard game for Arsenal, but again, the news would have filtered through. I mean, it's so flat in here now. Before kickoff, it was really exciting. Everyone was you know, up in arms singing. All the noises come from the Everton fans. Yeah, it was a jubilant atmosphere beforehand, wasn't it? And I think as we get later into the afternoon, when people realise that it is done, dusted, there's no hope. There's actually uh, only tributes to be played, paid to what has been a very good season. I think it will return again to a more positive atmosphere. But at this moment in time, 
It is very, very quiet, and that's because of this at the Etihad. Here's Alex Crook. Manchester City 2, West Ham nil. Phil Foden with both City goals, but Erling Haaland is doing his best to keep it interesting. He's just missed an absolute sitter. Brilliant ball swung into the area from Bernardo Silva. It was knocked down inside the six-yard box by Diaz, and he's four yards out, Haaland, and he's lifted his shot over the crossbar. It's a sitter. Man City 2, West Ham nil. Arsenal on the attack here, and the ball is with Erdegaard over on the far side. And Havertz has just had a shot blocked by Branthwaite inside the penalty area. And now De Cure is crunched Partey, and a free kick is given. Ball sent wide towards the left, and now Tomiyasu joining the attack for Arsenal, putting pressure on Everton once again. Infield it goes to Rice. Rice across to Partey. Partey chips it over the top it's a poor ball and easily picked off by Pickford on the edge of the six yard box 0-0 here's Darren Bent you're never ever going to get him with a pass like from Thomas Partey who has been as you said earlier Sam outstanding in the last few weeks but it's almost like a straight chip pass where only one thing can happen either Tarkovsky or Branthwaite clear it or Pickford comes and gets it which he does so Arsenal need to be a little bit more clever in that final third and as I said I know I understand the results probably seep through to the players and they can understand that at the minute they're not in the driving seat but still you never know what happens go and do your job go and finish this game off go and win the game and then see what happens. But at the minute, they're just a little bit in between, a little bit flat, lacking maybe a few ideas, a bit of creativity in the final third. In the last few weeks, that's not been Arsenal at all. No. But Everton are the kind of team that can frustrate you, and especially in the last few weeks. They've been in terrific form, Everton. And they have probably had their best spell. They have had their best spell of the campaign. And although everyone was talking about the title and whether or not Arsenal could get it. Sean Dyche very much wanted to concentrate on his team finishing the season in style. Let me, uh, we've got an injury here to uh, Andre Anana, who's just, uh, Andre no, Amadou Anana, who has just uh, fallen over. So we'll have a, a pause in play while everyone gets a little bit of uh, liquid intake. And that's so that they can rehydrate. It's a very hot day in North London. Where it is Arsenal nil, Everton nil. Brentford nil, Newcastle one. Brighton nil, Manchester United nil, Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest two, Chelsea lead Bournemouth by goal to nil, Crystal Palace are one up against Aston Villa, Luton nil, Fulham nil, Manchester City two nil up against West Ham and Sheffield United behind against Tottenham even though Adam Bridge was telling us it was against the run of play there has been a development at Anfield here's Matt Jones it's Liverpool nil Wolves nil but Wolves have just had Nelson Semedo sent off for a foul on Alexi McAllister he jumps in on the Liverpool midfielder he's late to the ball and he lands his boot on the Liverpool midfielder's ankle and he has received a red card after a VAR check it's Liverpool nil Wolves nil Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge of Liverpool before being replaced by Arna Slot there's commentary on our app from Toby Gillies this afternoon. If you want to download our app, you can get commentary on Brighton Manchester United, Brentford against Newcastle, Luton against Fulham and the game at Bramall Lane where Joe Shannon and Scott Minto are bringing you live commentary of Sheffield United against Tottenham on Talk Sport 2. We're about to get back underway here with Anana going off to receive treatment. It's Arsenal nil, Everton nil on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs and uh, that news from the Etihad has sort of deflated the party balloons hasn't it yeah so it has and even just then like obviously there's a break in play and the amount of fans that are going that would come almost leaving it was almost like well, come on do you know what I mean? we're only 29 minutes in there's still an opportunity the game's are over yet yeah well so I think they went out to get a beer because they can't drink inside the stadium so a couple of them have gone out to down a couple of pints and then come back in <laughs> A bit more vocal, be a bit more vocal. <laughs> the atmosphere might change if a few of them do that. Do you know what? You talked about the fans, but even if you look on the sidelines, I'm looking at Sean Dyche's body language, and he's really animated, wants his team to press, and he's up and down if they give the ball away. And Arteta, who we know when it comes to his technical area, doesn't really bend the rules. He's almost just standing there a little bit and just not doing anything. Interestingly, as they pick the ball up from the uh, goalkeeper, Raya, all of a sudden there is just a little murmur of noise amongst the Arsenal fans. They want them to get on the front foot. Tommy Yasu into Partey, and then towards Ben White he won't be in the England training squad unless he's had a massive change of heart he moves up to the edge of the area he's been so good for Arsenal this season and the injuries that England have got in defensive areas it would be remiss not to try and get him to change his mind I know that Gareth Southgate certainly has tried to do that here is White on to Partey then left to Tomiyasu Tomiyasu just overruns it a little bit but gives it to Trossard Trossard back in towards this near side and then it's clipped over towards 
the back edge of the penalty area where uh, Ben White's trying to keep it alive and does well to do so. Erdegaard in the box tries to go up with McNeil. The break, ball breaks on the edge of the penalty area, but it breaks in Everton's favour and they quickly jump up towards the halfway line. They've got four in the attack here, Everton, as they come forward. And it's uh, Calvert-Lewin who picks it up and it's three on two now into the area. Calvert-Lewin hits the post, comes back to him and he strokes it into the side netting. Well, a few of the Everton fans thought that had gone in the net. It hadn't. Calvert-Lewin getting in towards the left channel inside the box right footed drives the ball against the post and when it came back out to him he popped it against the side netting and the Arsenal fans just feeling a little bit as if their team have gone a bit too flat and casual just trying to raise them once again there's the danger we spoke about the midfield three Onana Adrissa Guy and Decore. the moment they broke Adrissa Guy, he flew forward Decore ran through the middle but it was Calvert-Lewin who kind of held his position a really really intelligent bit of movement didn't sprint forward just held his ground and when it came to him it's a really good finish because I think he's going to go for that far post he just pulls it back to that near post and he catches David Rare out but he hits the post but really intelligent striker play but when them three get forward they cause a lot of problems Garner felt he was fouled on the near side Sean Dyche did too he's come right out of his technical area to bellow into the ear of the fourth official on this near side Martinelli gets towards the right edge of the box tries to pull the ball through the box it comes to Havertz first bite hits Brantwaite second bite comes back out to Gabriel who strike careers into the air headed away by Tarkovsky collected by Erdegaard lovely touch down the right side into Havertz Havertz trying to turn it back into the centre into the danger zone but it's congested in there Erdegaard goes past McNeil clips it to the far post header across the face of goal bounces inside the area no red shirt can get there and it's hooked clear by Garner Gay out towards the far side it was there it was a really good play from Arsenal again because Odegaard puts a cross in to Declan Rice at the back post when it comes back onto the penalty area that's where Martin Odegaard usually would be he wasn't there to be seen but that's what Arsenal need to do keep creating these overloads certainly on this wide left Arsenal fans want their team to finish in style Crawley Town got themselves promoted today after beating Crew at Wembley so they'll be in League One next season England's women's 2020 international um, was victorious they've completed a 3-0 win over Pakistan and in F1 Max Verstappen held off a late charge from Lando Norris to claim win in the uh, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix and it's at the moment Manchester City are going to win the title Saliba down the right side towards the corner flag right in the corner on the far side and Ben White and back via Saliba to Erdogan edge of the area is Partey back wide again to Saliba he's forced out to the touchline goes back into Partey Partey looks up he's got three, four shirts to aim at in the centre but slows it down and there's a little bit of the lethargy now that's crept in from the crowd to the players, they're not moving the ball with the kind of tempo and intensity that Arsenal so often do and that frustration has started to creep in amongst those Arsenal supports Trossard going down the left, getting towards the edge of the penalty area, teeing it back up for Rice Rice now then trying to probe back to Trossard once again Trossard faced up by Coleman switches it to Partey bit of room for Saliba can he strike here no he slides it instead to Martinelli what a challenge that was from Tarkovsky uh, bruising one he got ball and man and uh, Martinelli has ended up staying down Erdegaard robs possession wins it goes into the box Tarkovsky well he uses his arm just to fend him away and does brilliantly to put it out over on the far side let's check in at the Etihad Stadium Talk Sports Alex Crook City 2 West Ham nearly coronation cruise for the champions Phil Foden scored both goals inside the first 18 minutes but it's not early Harland's day so far he's missed from four yards he's just been denied one on one by Ariola. the flag did go up but I think VAR would have had a look at it Manchester City 2 West Ham nil. Uh, let's go back off to Anfield Matt Jones and the party's in full swing now it's Liverpool 1 Wolves nil. Alexi McAllister opening the scoring for Liverpool he meets Elliott in swinging cross Liverpool on, Wolves nil. Liverpool in front at home at Anfield in Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge. He's won the Premier League, the Champions League, the FA Cup, two League Cups, the World Club Championship, the Community Shield, the UEFA Super Cup. Developed Salah, Trent, Mane, Jota, even Alisson scored a goal. They are the mentality monsters. They had a brilliant time under him. They will hope it continues under Arna Slot. Let's go down to the Amex because it's a crucial game this for both Brighton and Manchester United. It's the last game for De Zerbi and Manchester United need goals in order to try and 
claw away back into Europe via the league. Here's Alfie Reynolds. 34 minutes gone, Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. Brighton by far the better side, had a host of opportunities. The best of those, Adam Webster's header, which was blocked on the line by Lissandro Martinez. 34 gone, Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. Let's head off to the GTEC, another goal for Ollie Klink. It's Brentford nil, Newcastle 2. Jacob Murphy has doubled their lead. The ball was played down the left-hand side for Alexander Isak. He whipped it back across goal. And there was Murphy at the back stick to prod it home. And Newcastle in full control in that push for seventh. Brentford nil, Newcastle 2. Oh, good weekend for the Murphy brothers. Josh scoring twice yesterday, one with a hint of a deflection. And Jacob Murphy on the score sheet today. And that goal means that Newcastle, who have set a new club record for the most goals in a 38-game Premier League season already, today set a new club record for the most goals in any Premier League campaign. Yes, that's right. Eddie Howe's team are more entertaining than the entertainers. Do you know what? Fair play to them as well, because they went for a tough dip spell with the injuries and lack of form. And people were questioning Eddie Howe's drop. But to come back and finish inside Europe again for the second consecutive season, fair play to them. Fantastic from them. Well, that's only if Manchester United don't win the FA Cup. If Manchester United win the FA Cup, then seventh will not be good enough for a place in the Europa Conference League. I think my, I Why think did you scroll your face up? I think Newcastle are safe. <laughs> so, that's why. <laughs> Here's Partey. On to Erdegaard, who falls over the ball. Partey gets him out of dodge before Anana can spring and escape. It goes back to the right-hand side and white. Infield it goes to Partey again. It's still nil-nil between Arsenal and Everton with Manchester City leading. And another goal, the GTEC Oli Klink. And this is absolutely astonishing. Brentford nil, Newcastle three within moments of that second goal. Alexander Isak has got the third. Murphy was released down the right. It was worked to Isak inside the box and he's put it into the bottom left-hand corner. Brentford nil, Newcastle three. Yeah, it doesn't matter how many goals they score, they're not going to uh, eclipse Chelsea because they're three points behind them as it stands, with Chelsea only needing a point to ensure a place in the top six, which is quite remarkable. At the moment, they lead Bournemouth by a goal to nil. Mises Caicedo with his first ever goal for Chelsea. Here's McNeil charging down the left-hand side towards the edge of the box, and Thomas Partey with a really poor challenge, actually, from behind which is going to generate not only a free kick six yards outside the box for Everton, but a yellow card for Partey. Do you know what, Sammy? Atu? Because, again, with Onana and Decore and Dwight McNeil, when they drive forward, they drive forward with power, pace, and it was a four-on-four four situation, to be fair. So Thomas Partey's going, do you know what? Let me just take the foul one for the team, and then we'll get back in. But from, from Arsenal's perspective, when they're attacking, if they don't go forward with any intensity and quickly, Everton are so good under Sean Dyche and getting back into shape. The body, they throw their bodies on the line, they, they plug holes, there's no gaps anywhere. So then Arsenal end up keeping the ball, just passing the ball around the edge of the box until someone tries a pass that's not necessarily on. So when you win the ball back from Everton, you've got to go at them quickly. If not, it's going to be a long afternoon for Arsenal. Uh, we'll go to Selhurst Park for a quick goal. Talk Sport live on uh, the... Uh Talk sport app throughout the course of the afternoon with uh, various commentaries. Actually, this one isn't one of those, so let's go to Jake Robson. 39 on the clock, Palace 2, Villa nil. Mateta at the double, he got Palace's first. He's just had a cross put into him by Munoz and he slammed it in for Palace's second. Palace 2, Villa nil. Gay with a free kick in towards the near corner and he's taken a deflection and Everton lead. Well, there's no point in wanting favours elsewhere if you can't do your own job. And after giving away a cheap free kick on the edge of the penalty area, the ball's deflected off the Arsenal wall and beyond David Raya. And Everton lead at the Emirates Stadium by a goal to nil. Gay's effort, he took a big flick off the Arsenal wall. David Raya was stranded. The Golden Glove winner could do nothing about it. He went in the other corner. And it's Everton who lead by a goal to nil. I think it just deflects off Declan Rice's head, the side of his head. Yeah, it does. And goes in the far corner. There's absolutely nothing that David Rare could do about that. I mean, it was Thomas Partey brought him down. And after the first free kick, it was a dangerous area. I thought mm, maybe Dwight McNeil it was just a guy who took the free kick. And I don't think he beats David Rare if it doesn't take that for the deflection. But, I mean, listen, Declan Rice, he makes himself big. He doesn't turn his back. And it's unfortunate. It's one of those things. He's been outstanding, but it comes off his head and goes into the far corner. Idrissa Garnagay doesn't score too many goals, but when he does, they are usually exceptional goals. That goal greeted with stunned silence and a few more cues at the beer keller 
out the back in the concourse. How has it been greeted at the Etihad, Alex Crook? Manchester City 2, West Ham nil, but a real party mood now. Many of the City fans are on their feet. They're waving giant inflatable bananas in the air as news of that Everton goal began to filter. Phil Foden has got both the City girls, both inside the first 18 minutes. They've had 10 shots on target at the moment. Ariola is the only West Ham player who actually appears to be trying. It's Manchester City 2, West Ham 0. A goal at Anfield, which means we break the record for goals in a Premier League season. Matt Jones. And it's Liverpool 2, Wolves 0. Another Elliott corner coming into the box. It flicks off uh, Gakpo in the middle and comes to Salah at the back post. He hits a bobbling shot goalwards. I think Kwanzaa might get the final touch on it, but it was going in anyway. Liverpool 2, Wolves 0. So Salah with a goal, he'll be credited with that and that will be goal number 26 of the season for Mo Salah who I think most people probably think hasn't had a particularly spectacular season but 26 goals is not too bad, certainly not that shabby. Declan Rice has just been involved in a challenge with Tarkovsky, what happened there? Yeah, the ball went up in the air and I think Declan Rice has got there early but he might have, he wouldn't have left his arm there but he waved his arm to get elevation off the ground and just caught Tarkovsky in the face so listen, it was, it was harmless, it was... There was no intent in there, do you know what I mean? But Sean Dice and Everton fans jumped up. The Everton bench jumped up and maybe wanted to sack a little bit more, but no, it was so unintentional. Mm. Well, right now it is currently Arsenal nil, Everton 1, live on talk, sport. And that is bad news for Arsenal's hopes of winning the title. Great news for Everton who are in brilliant form. They've won five of their last seven games. And Arsenal, who have been almost relentless over the back end of this season, find themselves behind. And that's not good news because I think my calculations are right here. Only once, actually, have they come from behind all season in the Premier League. I mean, they're usually front runners. And that was when they conceded first against Manchester United in September and won here by three goals to one. No, and yeah, I think in, in certainly this game against um, against Everton, they've got to move the ball quicker, Sam, because at the minute it's quite slow. It's quite, it's not really causing any problems. They're not having to kind of manipulate the ball. They're not bringing Everton out of shape. Here's Erdegaard drifting the ball back to Tommy Yasu inside the area, rifles it home. It's one-one. Tommy Yasu just inside the box, right at the top edge. The ball gets pulled back through the penalty area from Erdegaard, and it's slammed in. Tommy Yasu gets his second of the season, his first since October. It was a brilliant finish from the edge of the box, arrowed in past Jordan Pickford. And it's Arsenal 1, Everton 1. Sean Dyche not happy. He thinks there was an infringement just before that attack unfolded. But the Arsenal goal is going to stand. It's 1-1. Really good goal. We spoke about Arsenal having to play a lot quicker. They up the tempo there. They roll it in behind the fullback, and Martinelli's he's there. He's down. He uses his pace. Gets away from Ashley Young. Cuts it back into a really good area. And Tommy Yasu from the other side comes onto it. And it's a really intelligent finish. Just uses the pace on the on the pull on the cross and just guides it into this near post corner. Really good finish from Tommy Yasu. And he's had a couple of those this first this first half, but that one he makes no mistake with. It's a good pull back by Erdegaard. I mean, Sean Dyche can complain about any infringement and foul in the build-up happened many phases of play before the initial uh, shot from uh, or the eventual shot from Tommy Yasu but the defending the defending to allow Erdegaard to see that go all the way through the box with that pass which sived open the Everton defence was absolutely dreadful what were they doing right let's go to the Etihad Stadium because there has been another goal Alex Crook Game on, Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. It took 42 minutes for West Ham even to win a corner. But from that corner, Mohamed Koudas take a bow. This is a stunning goal. The ball was played in from the left-hand side, only half away by Guardiola. And acrobatically, with the overhead kick, it's been rifled beyond Ortega. Pep Guardiola slams his water bottle down in front of him. Not a good couple of minutes from Manchester City. It is City 2, West Ham 1. Listen to this. The Arsenal fans all on their feet. Seven minutes of added time. At the end of the first half, a big bloke walks past me and screams, come on! There is a little bit of hope all of a sudden. Listen to the Arsenal fans. Hands 
thrusting into the air, singing Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. All of a sudden, there's a little bit more belief. There is. Mitchell should getting that goal, but a huge goal for West Ham there, getting themselves back into that game at the Etihad. This is what I expected the atmosphere to be like, regardless of the result. I thought the atmosphere would be like this in here all afternoon, and it hasn't been, but it's just giving them a little bit of hope. Great goal from Tomiyasu now. It's about can they go and get the winner because there's no point in it staying like this because they still need another one. They need to win this game. So that's what they need to do. Uh, a lady in a West Ham United shirt comes running up the uh, the side of the, uh, the the stairwell and says, is that Darren Bent? It is Darren Bent. Why are you wearing a West Ham shirt? Well, she said she loves you. <laughs> She'll love uh, West Ham United a lot more if they can get another goal this afternoon because if they if West Ham were to score now and Arsenal were to score here all of a sudden Arsenal will be top of the table goal at Kenilworth Road let's get there now for the final time in the Premier League Jeff Peters it's Luton nil, Fulham 1, Adama Traore, right-footed from the edge of the penalty area. Really powerful low hit, but Luton have just been awarded a penalty, which Carlton Morris will be about to take. We'll just stay with it for the moment. He's taking back a few steps here. Morris to try and level things up in first half stoppage time at Kenilworth Road. Here comes Morris for Luton with the penalty. He scores. Luton 1, Fulham 1. 1-1 one, one in that game, here come Arsenal, all the Arsenal fans are going crackers here, down in front of us. I don't know if they think that something has happened elsewhere, but I can tell you, our information is, nothing has happened elsewhere. Ball over on the far side with Arsenal, they're getting excited inside the Emirates Stadium. I don't know what they've heard, but it's an Arsenal... It's an Everton free kick just left of the centre circle. Nothing has happened at the Etihad that would signal that sort of response. But the Arsenal fans certainly trying to believe. 2-1 to Manchester City at this moment in time. It is 2-1 to Manchester City at this moment in time. And it is 1-1 here. Ball delivered into the box by Everton towards the right edge of the penalty area. Tarkovsky into the air. He committed a foul as he did so. Michael Oliver gives a free kick. We're into the third of seven minutes of added time. And it's currently Arsenal 1, Everton 1. And for the ladies' odds, you can head to Betfair, where right now you can back Arsenal to win the game 3 to 1 on. Everton to win the game 10 to 1. The back the draw 7 to 2. Don't forget with Betfair, they're paying out on winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute payout. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. That's all thanks to Betfair 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. I don't know what's going on here, Sam, because all of a sudden there's a huge roar. People are asking us, is it 2-2? It's 2-2 and it's still 2-1. Well, let's ask Alex Crook. What is it? Still Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. Should have been 3, though. Erling Haaland, for the second time this afternoon, has missed an absolute sitter. Ball cut back to him from around about six yards out. Look for all the world as if he would pick out the net. And he's blazed it over the crossbar into four added minutes here. He's got a bit nervy all of a sudden. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. Yeah, see, it's always nervy on the final day of the season. No matter what happens, they've had a head start. They've got off to an absolute fly in Manchester City. But all of a sudden... West Ham United, who are no strangers to final day drama, by the way. 1995 denied United the title with an amazing goalkeeping performance. They knocked Spurs out of the top four after Tottenham had a dodgy lasagna. They beat Man City, who uh, clinched uh, Man United on the final day. Sorry to stay up. They sent Sheffield United down in 2007. They relegated Middlesbrough in 2000 and nine on the final day so they love a bit of final day drama West Ham United themselves lots of final day drama at Kenilworth Road Jeff Peters yeah Fulham have retaken the lead here three goals in quick succession Raul Jimenez has put Fulham back in front first time hit from the edge of the box rolled it in lovely finish Luton 1 Fulham 2 Luton's final match of their one Premier League campaign to date Rob Edwards said he was still grieving he says he's jealous of those who will be in the Premier League next season. You wonder, actually, if he'll be bit back quicker than Luton Town after what we were hearing today from Alex Crook. Here is David Raya, deep inside his own territory. 1-1 the score between Arsenal and Everton. Manchester City lead by two goals to one. The woman with the West Ham shirt is uh, back in her seat. And she's done the hammers sign as she's gone back to sit next to her friends. 
Out on the left, the ball is with Trossard. Whipped in by Tommy Asu to the far post. Headed down, comes towards Erdegaard. It took a little deflection and went away from Havertz. Gets back on the edge of the area for Partey, who strikes over the bar. Well, he was 19 yards from goal. He got right over the ball, struck it really firmly, actually, and did well to keep it down. But it just went just a little bit too high over the top of the crossbar. Yeah, I think there could have been a little bit less pace put on the ball to him. I mean, we saw him score a great one last year against Spurs down this end. But Thomas Partey coming onto it, that hard side foot as well. I think the layoff from Odegaard is, is good play, but maybe put a bit too much on it. Maybe if he leaves it in an area and lets Thomas Partey come onto it, he might get a better connection. But that's better for Marshall, playing quickly, moving the ball from left to right, not slowing it down because the, to break this Everton team down, as they did for the goal, you have to play quickly because they're so good at getting into shape. Now, you said to me just a minute ago, I don't know what is going on here, where it's Arsenal 1, Everton 1, Brentford 0, Newcastle 3, Brighton 0, Manchester United 0, Burnley 0, Nottingham Forest 2, Chelsea 1, Bournemouth 0, Crystal Palace 2, Aston Villa 0, Liverpool 2, Wolves down to 10 men 0, Luton 1, Fulham 2, Manchester City 2, West Ham 1, and Sheffield United 0, Tottenham 1. At the moment, Manchester City 91 points, winning the title, Arsenal 87 points, courtesy of the draw here. They're coming second. Then Liverpool, Aston Villa, Tottenham in fifth, Chelsea in sixth, Newcastle in seventh, United in eighth. And at the bottom of the table, no chance of a Luton revival. They're trailing and Nottingham Forest are winning and there would have to be a huge goal swing. Anyway, you're up to date, live on Talk Sport, where we bring you every moment of action, every twist and turn from the final day of the Premier League. We're into the 52nd minute of the first half. And there is the half-time whistle. A setback early on for Arsenal, who didn't really get going once they knew that Phil Foden had scored two goals. Then Idrissa Garnagay with a deflected free kick put Everton in front. But once Arsenal scored through Tomiyasu, and then news of the West Ham revival came through, it changed the atmosphere inside this stadium. At this moment in time, they're not going to win the title. They still need... A few things to go in their favour, but there's a little bit more hope than there were after just a couple of minutes. At the break, it's Arsenal 1, Everton 1. Arsenal all square there. They need to win. By the way, a draw's not good enough. Arsenal need to win, and they need West Ham to do something here. Half-time whistle has gone at the Etihad, Alex Crook. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. Pep Guardiola's side halfway to a history-making fourth successive Premier League title but it's not quite as comfortable as it looked for much of that first half the champions took just two minutes to get themselves in front Phil Foden who's been sensational once again picked up Bernardo Silva's pass just inside the D on the edge of the penalty area and he curled an unstoppable left foot shot beyond Alphonse Areola into the top corner Foden doubled his and City's tally 16 minutes later good work this time from Jeremy Doku over on the left hand side he cut the cross back and Foden guided the ball into the bottom left hand corner from around about 15 yards out Ariola made a number of excellent saves to keep the score line down Erling Haaland has missed not one but two sitters from inside the six yard box and those spurned opportunities came back to haunt City three minutes before the end of regulation time in this first half West Ham with their first quarter of the game swung in from the left hand side it was a half hearted clearance by Guardiola and a brilliant overhead kick into the roof of the net from Mohamed Kudas Manchester City 2 West Ham 1 but you can feel the tension around the Etihad Stadium you definitely can uh, the Premier League table is a little bit misleading right now Manchester City on 91 as things stand Arsenal on 87 four point gap but a couple of quick goals one for Arsenal down there one for West Ham up here and all of a sudden Arsenal will be top of the table that's how quickly things can change as it stands though Manchester City will be winning another Premier League title. Let's get the latest from Betfair, the official betting partner of TalkSport's Premier League coverage. Game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a hand from Betfair's popular bet builder and easily add our fan favourite football selections to your bet slip. Terms and conditions apply. See support.betfair.com. 18 plus begamblerware.org. Well, Alex Boyce from Betfair. Phil Foden with a couple of brilliant strikes. And I think a lot of people are thinking it's all over. Then Everton go 1-0 up. It's definitely all over. But a goal for Arsenal, a goal for West Ham, and suddenly the feeling changes a little bit, doesn't it? 
<laughs> it really does. I mean, that looked like we should all pack up and go home at one point, didn't it? Phil Foden, absolutely incredible. By the way, Adrian, on Foden, he was 20 to 1 for a hat trick before the game today. We had 18 backers. The most ha most stakes was ten pounds, so people cheering that on in the second half. And if we stick with that game, City thirty three to one on to, go, to still go out and win this game. West Ham a hundred to one, but what I can tell you is West Ham were five hundred to one when it was two 0 because it looked like an absolute onslaught, didn't it? They're now a hundred to one. They did touch eighty to one back out to 100. The draw is 15-1. to 1. Maybe this game will finish just as it did in that Aston Villa game a couple of years ago with a 3-2 win to Man City. That's priced at 9-1. to Whilst Haaland, I mean, he looks like he doesn't want to score at the minute, doesn't it? He has been boosted to score in the second half. However, still odds on at 8-11. to 11. So look, people still expect this to go the way of the first 20 minutes or so. Over to the Emirates. Arsenal, they're 2-5. to five. So massively odds on to come out and get to win the game in the second half. Uh, Everton touched nearly 2-1 to one when they went 1-0 up don't know if anyone got on that but they're now back out to 8-1 to one after conceding fairly quickly in the second half the draw is 31-10 to 10. looking at some of the players Ars Arsenal Havertz he's 9-4 to four. Trossard 12-5 to five. whilst Declan Rice he's been in great form he's 9-2 to two to score in the second half uh, Alex, thanks for that. I've got to say, Haaland's missed two absolute sitters. Ariola with a couple of saves as well. It is only 2-1, and while it is that 2-1 uh, scoreline, and West Ham next goal crucial, Arsenal still have hope, but really, Manchester City should be out of sight here at the Etihad. That odds update is all thanks to Betfair. Returns accurate as of 10 minutes ago. For verification, see betfair.com. Over 18s only. Conditions apply. Go to begamblerware.org. Game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a hand from Betfair's popular bet builder and easily add our fan favourite football selections to your bet slip. Terms and conditions apply. See support.betfair.com. 18 plus be gamblerware.org. So Arsenal 1, Everton 1, Man City 2, West Ham 1 as it stands. City are winning the title again. Let's go around the grounds for the rest of the half-time, starting at Stamford Bridge. Talk sports, Charlotte Richardson. Chelsea 1, Bournemouth nil. A solitary strike separates the sides, and what a strike it was. Chelsea broke forward on the 17th minute, a move spearheaded by Nicholas Jackson. It forced the visiting goalkeeper Neto off of his line to deal with. His clearance fell to Moises Caicedo on the halfway line. As soon as the ball left his boot, Adrian, you just knew it was heading into the back of the empty net surrendered by the Bournemouth captain. The deadlock broken from 50.5 yards out. The fifth furthest goal scored by an outfielder on record. That is the marginal gain that the hosts have at the break and would be enough to secure European football next season. Half time here, Chelsea 1, Bournemouth 0. Half time at the G-Tech as well. Talk sports, Ollie Clink. It's Brentford 0, Newcastle 3 at the break. Newcastle needs a win today to stay in contention for European football next season. And luckily for them, they are absolutely cruising here. Harvey Barnes headed them in front on 21 minutes to put them in control. Then 10 minutes before half time, Jacob Murphy slid home a second. And less than 90 seconds after that goal, Alexander Isak tucked home his 21st. First Premier League goal of the season to have them three up at the break. The Magpies have been classy and clinical, Adrian, and barring a Brentford miracle, they'll be securing at least seventh place this afternoon. Half time here, Brentford nil, Newcastle three. Winning for goals at the Amex with Alvin Martin and Alfie Reynolds. Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. It's been one way traffic in the first half. Brighton will wonder how they don't lead. Plenty of chances. Barco and Moda with effort saved. Jao Pedro flashing a shot through the area and wide. And the close they came was Webster's header which was blocked on the line by Martinez United for the most part have been poor McTominay with their best chance he blazed it over the bar when one on one Alvin Martin watching alongside me how are Brighton not in the lead I don't know Alfie it's, it's been a you know disjointed and uninspired uh, first 45 by United and really they've had everything uh, apart from a goal going back the other way Brighton look I said before the game that we need a or the Premier League I should say next season needs a, a strong man United but when you look at this performance you wonder where it's going to come from they are miles off he is so fortunate to be going in at nil-nil and surely he's got to make changes at half time Ten Hag he's got Hoyland on the bank Rashford uh, Anthony uh, because they've just looked impotent up front 
Well, as things stand, United's hopes of European football will rest on winning the FA Cup final and Brighton are dropping into the bottom half. The half-time score at the Amex, it's Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. Also, as it stands, Man United set for their lowest finish in Premier League history. They are eighth as things stand. Half-time at Bramall Lane, Talk Sports, Adam Bridge. Sheffield United nil, Spurs won. Fast start from the home side. Should have been in front before Spurs scored. Brereton Diaz with a really good opportunity on three minutes. He shot over from 12 yards after a mistake uh, by Dragusin. He then got another chance with a lovely Harmer clip through that forced a really good save from Vicario. It was then that Spurs scored. Kulisevsky with our first attack of the game. Wide on the left-hand side, shot it beyond Fodringham off the inside of the left hand upright. Fodringham, last appearance for Sheffield United today, made good saves to deny Kulisevsky, Son, Pedro Porro and Madison. That would have put the game out of sight, but Archer, towards the end of the first half, had a terrific opportunity for Sheffield United that was well saved again. This game's still alive, but at the moment, Spurs are getting Europa League football next season. Sheffield United nil, Spurs won. Tops, last ever Liverpool half-time team talk at Anfield, Matt Jones. And he's getting a win at the moment. It's Liverpool 2, Wolves nil. Wolves have barely been in it they've only had one shot on target Allison tipping Huang's effort around the post since then Samido was shown a red card after a VAR review for a foul on McAllister and then Liverpool got to work McAllister getting the first goal on 34 minutes as he headed home Elliot's in swing and cross quite how he got there ahead of the tall Wolves defenders I'm not so sure and Liverpool then doubling their lead with five minutes to go before the break a ball into the box by Elliot flicked on by Gakpo to the back post where Salah hit a bobbling effort goalwards Kwanzaa was on the line to poke it in it's Liverpool 2, Wolves nil at the break. Half-time at Salah's Park for Talk Sports. Jake Robson. Palace 2, Villa, Villa nil. Mateta at the double with his 14th and 15th in the league this season. The first came in the seventh minute when he was nicely played through by Elise. The second came six from the break when he turned in Munoz's cross. It's now 10 in seven here for the striker who becomes the second Frenchman to score in seven straight at home after Thierry Henry. Villa's best chance came when the score was 1-0. Diaby threw on goal, played through by Louise, but his shot was straight at Henderson. Villa on the beach. Half-time at Selhurst, Palace 2, Villa 0. Luton heading down. Kenilworth Road half-time, Jeff Peters. Luton 1, Fulham 2. All the goals coming late on in the half. Adama Traore making his first league start of the season with a thumping hit from the edge of the box two minutes before the break to put Fulham ahead. Soon after, Ogbeni was fouled by Bassey and Colton Morris made no mistake with the penalty. His 11th goal of the season. Harry Wilson then got his second assist, teeing up Raul Jimenez to sweep home with a tidy first-time hit. Morris and Adebayo earlier denied by Smart Leno saves. Whatever happens, Luton going down. Down. Fulham could be up to 13th. They lead Luton 2 1. And half time at Turf Moor, John Dunn. Where it's Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest 2. Chris Wood hadn't scored in his last five, but that drought firmly ended with two goals in the first 14 minutes against his former club. The first after just 90 seconds, a close range finish after super win play by Anthony Alanga. The second came on 14 when he stayed home a Ryan Yates shot from just seven yards out. It was initially ruled out for offside, but VAR confirmed his 15th goal of the season. It's a Park T atmosphere in the away end. Burnley nil, Forest 2. This is game day. Halftime classifieds. In the Premier League, half times all of these Arsenal 1, Everton 1, Brentford 0, Newcastle 3, Brighton 0, Man United 0, Burnley 0, Forest 2, Chelsea 1, Bournemouth 0, Crystal Palace 2, Aston Villa 0, Liverpool 2, Wolves 0, Luton 1, Fulham 2, Man City 2, West Ham 1, Sheffield United 0, Tottenham 1. In the League 2 playoff final at Wembley, Crawley 2, Crew 0, and in the Scottish Premiership, it finished Livingston 1, Hibs 1. Motherwell 1, St Johnston 2 and Ross County 2, Aberdeen 2, it means Ross County will take the relegation playoff place. Game day live on TalkSport with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Chelsea versus Bournemouth live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports, 18 plus, free via internet, terms apply. Mmm. Mmm. When it's lunch o'clock, I just eat the tortilla naked burrito bowl. Oh. I didn't know you could get those. (laughs) There's a lot you don't know, dear. Well, I know that shirt's not coming back into fashion anytime soon. (sighs) Touché. Get tortilla, subway, pret, and more delivered. For lunch and everything else. Did somebody say just eat? Charges apply. Check available restaurants in your area and open in times on justeat.co.uk for details. Whether you're drilling or decorating, get the job done with Big Spring offers on trade essentials at Screwfix. Upgrade your kit and save £10 on the DeWalt Brushless Cordless Combi Drill, now only $159.99. And get rolling on those paint jobs with two for £26 on 10-litre Fortress Trade contract matte paint. 
Shop Spring Offers now on the app at screwfix.com or in store. Delivery fees may apply. Prices valid until at least June 2nd. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. We all fantasize about our perfect home. Watching the big game cozied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing round my football! But come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Who are you going for in the racing today? The favourite. And tomorrow? The favourite. And the next day? The favourite! The Suns Horse Racing Pullout, the favourite, is now in the paper seven days a week. Yes, that's right. Every single day. Bringing you even more top tips, more form guides, more race cards, and all the colours and silks. Get your favourite pullout every day in the sun. The home of racing. McDonald's are making small improvements to our classic burgers, searing our 100% British and Irish beef patties so they're even juicier. And we're serving them hotter for meltier cheese, all in new toastier buns. The classics, now a little more. Mmm. Comparison with prior classic burgers, served after 11am, subject to availability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Game day live on Talk Sport with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. Game Day. Ariel Gold Award winner for Best Sports Coverage 2024. Game Day Live. On Talk Sport. Well, it's O'Hara and Agbon Hall taking your calls on the Game Day phone in after the Premier League trophy is lifted. Now, forget your influencers, forget social media rumours. Talk Sport, the only place for authentic genuine news of goals as they go in here at the Etihad City 2 West Ham 1 as the players come out for the second half and as it stands City will be champions and in our commentary on TalkSport Arsenal 1 Everton 1 the Gunners need a goal here's Darren Bent and Sam Matchface yeah and uh, that's worth pointing out actually Adrian because listen on TalkSport we'll tell you what's happening and we are here in the stadium real time when you hear us shout goal it is a goal when we take you to a stadium maybe it'll be the Etihad Stadium in the second half and Alex Crook tells you there's a goal it's a goal there's no rumours there's no reason for you to doubt what you're hearing I've noticed that there's a lot of people on their phones here believing other stuff that's coming in and that certainly happened towards the end of that first half Benty and actually everyone was talking about that in the press room where did that come from and ultimately it starts happening on social media and people then feed it through yeah. if you listen to the radio you have no such problems do you know what Sam? I even started questioning my uh, Wi-Fi I can't think if I miss something here I'm trying to update it I'm flicking down to see if there's a bit of a you don't need to worry about that <laughs> Alex Crook is there Alex Alex Crook just about to get underway in the second half Alex, have they started yet where you are? They have. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. We've played six seconds in the second half. No change uh, in personnel, but definitely a change of mood around the home fans. Firstly, when Arsenal scored, and then when Kuda scored, what has to go down as the goal of the final day. So he's there. You're hearing him in real time. We've just got underway here at the start of the second half. So they are about 15 seconds ahead of us at the Etihad Stadium. And we had seven minutes of added time at the end of the first half. No one really knew why that was the case. Early starters at the bridge. Here's TalkSport's Charlotte Richardson. Chelsea 2, Bournemouth nil. It's a dazzling run down the left by Raheem Sterling and a finish that dazzled the Bournemouth keeper from a tight angle. Chelsea double the advantage minutes into the second half. Chelsea 2, Bournemouth nil. And a goal for Oli Klink again. Yeah, three minutes into the second half. Brentford 1, Newcastle 3. Vitaly Janat was pulled one back for the bees here. The ball was laid off to him inside the box and he slammed it into the back of the net. Is it game on? Brentford 1, Newcastle 3. Well, it's a big job for Brentford to do. Rarely do they score three goals in a game, but at the end of the season, 
Um, throws up some dodgy results. Kenilworth Road, we've got another goal, Jeff Peters. Yeah, Fulham leading Luton now by three goals to one. Raul Jimenez has got his second of the afternoon just before the break, just after the break. A glancing header in off the post from a free kick. Luton one, Fulham three. And another goal at Stamford Bridge, Charlotte Richardson. Chelsea two, Bournemouth one, an instant response from the visitors. A strike inside the box took a wicked deflection off of, I think it was the Chelsea centre-back and it goes beyond the goalkeeper. They've replied, they've halved the deficit. Chelsea 2, Bournemouth 1. I'm still looking at all the apps, and the apps don't have any of those goals yet, Darren Ben, no. which is why you listen to Talk Sport. We're faster than anyone else. I'm guessing here it must be on dial-up, because <laughs> I'll tell you, all these apps are so slow. They're just not as fast as Talk Sport, <laughs> pal. Here is Martinelli on the right-hand side. No changes for Arsenal or Everton at the start of the second half. We played a minute. Here's Martinelli's cross into the box, headed down towards goal by Havertz. He's narrowly wide of the right-hand upright, and it goes out for a goal kick to Everton. The last time that Arsenal lost their final Premier League game of the season was 19 years ago. Arsene Wenger was in charge. Birmingham City were the opponents. It was the same month as Liverpool's Gerrard-inspired Champions League triumph in Istanbul. Arsenal became the first club to win the FA Cup final on penalties and Darren Bent was losing a championship playoff semi-final against West Ham. Still burns to this day, that. That was under Jimmy Magilton, wasn't it? No, that was under Joe Royal. Was it? And yeah. uh, was uh, it was you and Shefki Kuki up front, is yeah, that right? Do I remember chef. right that? Right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I remember that because uh, I used to date an Ipswich season ticket holder and I went to the home leg and they'd moved all the season ticket holders out of their seats to accommodate West Ham fans didn't go down very well <laughs> there we are West Ham ended up going uh, up via the playoffs I think that season they, they won that semi-final and then won the final didn't they yeah they beat us twice in the semis here over on the left hand side the ball is uh, collected by uh, Seamus Coleman goes back to uh, Coleman again from Ghana and then it's cleared away over on the far side it takes a deflection off Trossard and it's away for a throw in away to our right hand side you're listening to talk sport on this final day of the premier league season and it is 1-1 between arsenal and everton in fact you know we, everyone's getting a little bit excited about Mark, what might happen in the second half and maybe west ham will come back and get an equalizer but arsenal have got to get in front that's the thing sam i think a lot of people looking at the, the result with the etta thinking this is a foregone conclusion but we've really seen certainly from that first half that Everton are really well drilled organized organized sean dyche team very rarely there's any space so yeah if arsenal want have got any aspirations as you said of winning this premier league title they've got to take care of their business first that whatever happens at the etta will happen that like, we can't control that but what arsenal can control is their performance today and try and hopefully get that three points most of arsenal's games are filled with goals they've been averaging over two goals per game throughout the course of the season but there's no Saka today He's injured. The ball flicked up into the air towards Erdegaard, who nudges it on. It goes straight through to Pickford. And then uh, Partey almost pinched it off Anana, but he didn't get that right at all. And he's maybe a little bit too eager there, Thomas Partey. And Anana comes away rather easily to get to the halfway line for Everton. Out to the wide right-hand side, collected by Coleman for Everton, just over halfway. It's 1-1 on Talksport here. Still 2-1 to Manchester City at the Etihad. And City are winning a four straight title. That was a poor challenge by Tarkovsky through the back of Kai Havertz. And a yellow card goes his way as a result. Yeah, really poor tackle there from, from Tarkovsky there. But it's, it's really good play for Marshall because it goes into Kai Havertz's feet. But I think his touch just takes it a yard away from him. And that allows Tarkovsky to come in. And listen, they, they call that one a free hit. I know you don't get many free hits in, in today's football. But that's one of those where the centre half will look at it and go, right, I've got an opportunity to really lay something on the forward. And he does it and he picks up a yellow card. Is it a free hit if you get a yellow card? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got to be now tight. He's got to obviously play like that. He can't be, do too much wrong now in case he gets himself sent off. But that is one of those where it's there and you go, oh, do you know what? Licking our lips are like one of those. Late, late start, last day of the season Exactly. Well. Yeah. He's not going to worry too much if he gets a red today. What would you do? Miss the first game of next season? Who knows where you'll be at that stage? <laughs> you never know. Not with uh, the way that Everton's uh, situation is. They stayed up last season being... Bournemouth on the final day of the season after Lida Corre scored the goal that day. Here is Ben White chasing the ball into the corner, just runs out of room. It bounces behind and goes out for a goal kick away to our right-hand side. It's certainly not been the most dynamic Arsenal performance. They're constricted a little bit by anxiety and acceptance, really, that they think that Manchester City are going to get the job done. But it's still a very slender margin, and we've seen things change on the last day of the season so often in this Premier League that... Uh, you know, with games that go on until like the hundredth minute, anything can happen. 
Exactly, that's why it's so important that Arsenal get their job done. I mean, as you said, no, not really dynamic. I mean, that pass from Thomas Partey was the right pass, but he's got the technique wrong, a little bit too straight. But you're right, if they can get this job done and win this game, then that might put a little bit of pressure. Havertz has outwitted Brampwaite, got into the penalty area, but then Brampwaite just done enough to nudge it in front of him. And Havertz couldn't make up the ground before Jordan Pickford's starting position was very good, and he came out and gobbled it up. And it comes out to this near side and it's cleared away by Everton. Goal at Selhurst Park for TalkSports, Jake Robson. 54 on the clock, Palace 3, Villa nil. Eze this time, he picked up the ball on the left, cut inside on his right, and he slammed it past Robin Olsen from 20 yards. Palace 3, Villa nil. He'll be tuned in to TalkSport at uh, 1 o'clock on Tuesday to find out the announcement of their extended England training squad for the European Championships. It's live TalkSport, 1 o'clock on Tuesday. You're involved in that, aren't you? I'm indeed, and surely he has to be in it. As a his form under Glasner since he's how, been there. How big is this squad going to be? Well, I think there's going to be one or two names that we don't that we think oh they're they're nailed on that don't go. Mm, I really do. Interesting. There's only about two fit defenders at this moment in time, which is a bit of a problem. It's going to be all out attack at this moment in time. Here's Odegaard down the right hand side, getting to the edge of the penalty area, trying to outfox to Kure. Lifts it for Partey, and then into White. White tries to turn it through the centre. Deflection by Young. Comes out on this near touchline. It's away for a throw in to Everton. There's a goal at Kenilworth Road for Jeff Peters. It's Luton 2, Fulham 3. Alfie Doughty for the home side free kick. Right hand side. It just went through everybody in the penalty area and beat Leno. Luton 2, Fulham 3. So Fulham 3 2 up against Luton away from home. Doesn't really affect anything as far as Luton Town are concerned. At the top of the table, Arsenal 1, Everton 1, and Manchester City leading Everton by two goals to one means City will win the title. Brentford 1, Newcastle 3. They're going to finish in seventh the way it stands. Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. Manchester United are going to finish lower than ever before. Burnley nil, Forest 2. Chelsea 2, Bournemouth 1. They're going to finish in the top six, Chelsea, which is remarkable, bearing in mind how far away they were just a few months ago. Crystal Palace 3-0 up against Aston Villa. Liverpool in Klopp's final game 2-0 up against 10-man Wolves. And Sheffield United 1-0 down against Tottenham Hotspur live on Talk Sport 2. If you want to listen to the conclusion of that, you can download our app. The score is Arsenal 1, Everton 1 on Talk Sport with Now. Don't forget that with Now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Manchester City versus West Ham live right now, no contract, with an Now membership. Search Now Sports. Everton have the ball deep inside their own half. They're trying to break forward here. Is there much anxiety at the Etihad, Alex Crook? Nine minutes gone in the second half. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. All of the play has been in the West Ham final third of the field since half-time. Kevin De Bruyne has stabbed an effort wide from the edge of the area. Phil Foden chasing a hat-trick, also curled past the post from a long, long way out. At the moment, West Ham camped inside their own half as City uh, look for a third to ease the anxiety here. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1. If it stays like that, and there's a goal here, the last few moments could be dramatic. Well, Arsenal have got to get the, the job done here first. I mean, as you said, it seems quite tense there at Rieta, but Arsenal at the minute haven't really put too many opportunities, certainly this second half. We haven't really tested the goal, the goalkeeper enough for me. Uh, Gabriel and Decoure just having a little bit of uh, afters over on the far side. It results in Decoure picking up a yellow card. I mean... It was a bit pathetic, all of that, wasn't it, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't really see, think there should have been a, a yellow card there. It didn't really hit too much. A little bit of to and throwing, but wasn't not to warrant a yellow card anyway. And Crawley back on the bus on the way home from the uh, League Two playoff final, listening to talks ball. And in party mood, they're promoted to League One earlier today. Here's Martinelli trying to get the ball into the box. It's cleared away by Gay up through the middle of the pitch, and it's taken down by Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Cross comes Trossard to put pressure on him on the edge of the centre circle. Doesn't quite get there. And then it's cleared out over on the far side by Tomiyasu. Only as far as Tarkovsky, who sends the ball crossfield right to left. Too heavy, it's going to bounce out of play on this near side. And it's away for an Arsenal throw. I did get a message from Faker others, actually. I know you worked with her for a very long time. Mm. I don't know if you know this, but apparently she supports Luton Town. And she doesn't <laughs> mention it very often. Uh, but I said in the first half, we'll go to Kenilworth Road for the final time in the Premier League. And she went, this season, she sent me a big... Capitals message as she drives back from the League 2 playoff final we will be back she said well I hope very much that's the case we've really enjoyed going to Luton this season best commentary position in the entire league I'll tell you here is White touching the ball towards the edge of the penalty area cut out by Garner Gay he strides forward over the halfway line De Cure's made a brilliant run through the middle didn't utilise him 
Garner's gone the other side. I mean, they've had a great opportunity here to counter-attack, and Garner is just... Uh, Garner Gay has left so long dawdling on the ball, he, he hasn't released the right option, and that momentum has gone out of the attack. Where well, it was Decore was the pass, because yeah. he said they drove it really well, and Decore, he must have run about 70 yards at full throttle. If he rolled it in, he's in on goal 1v1 with David Rao, but he doesn't, he held onto it, held onto it, and then played it wide, and that's... He's almost let Arsenal off the hook there. Goal at Bramall Lane. Let's get there now. Adam Bridge. Sheffield United nil. Spurs to what a strike as well from Pedro Porro. His third Premier League goal of the season from the edge of the box. He's rattled it into the top of the net. Madison should have scored before. Great save as well from Fodderingham. Came out to Porro though and he's rattled it home and that should be it for Spurs to secure sixth in the Premier League. Sheffield United nil. Spurs two. I hope they'll be uh, securing fifth actually, Adam, to be honest. If they're going sixth, then something quite chaotic must have happened yeah they're fifth in the Premier League 66 points two points behind Aston Villa uh, a Tottenham Hotspur leading by two goals to nil and that will mean entry into the Europa League group stage and I think they'll be they'll be happy that they've done that but I still think after that brilliant start they had 26 points from 10 games at the beginning of the campaign no one ever fails to get into the top four in that scenario the fact that they have I think will still be rather disappointing for them yeah it will be I mean but they've had a lot to do with the injuries I think hit them at the wrong time I remember their game against Chelsea where they lost a couple to suspension and then a few injuries as well I think that really derailed them because Madison was playing well Van der Ven was playing well Romero was playing well but as you said the, the fact that they're back in Europe for me that, that shows a sign of progression under this Anne Foster Coglu uh, reign well they'll need to make sure that they uh uh, bolster that squad in the summer because uh, Ange Postacoglu hasn't had European football to deal with they went out of the uh, FA Cup in January and out of the League Cup in the first round so there's not much uh, it's not that they've had extra games to play so you can talk about injuries all you like but there's a lot of other teams that have been a lot more stretched than they have um, let's go off uh, to the Etihad Stadium and see what the atmosphere is like there because at the moment City are still winning the title Alex Brook Yes, they are. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1, as it was at half-time. City uh, in possession as you join me on the edge of the West Ham penalty area. That's been the story, really, of this second half. Lots of cries have come on City from the home supporters, but they're a little bit more nervous than they were early on. They're not nervous anymore because Manchester City may just have sealed the title and it's their man for all seasons, Rodri from the edge of the penalty area, right footed, right footed beyond Areola into the bottom left hand corner. City fans celebrate again. Surely now it will be four in a row for Pep Guardiola's winning machine. It is Manchester City three, West Ham one. Manchester City 3-1 in front. They restore their two-goal advantage. The Etihad jumps to its feet to applaud Gabriel, who goes off on this near side to be replaced by Zinchenko. Tomiyasu switches into the middle of the defence. Zinchenko, formerly a Manchester City player, would have known that there was very little chance of Pep Guardiola's team letting up and messing up today and they have put their foot back to the floor with half an hour to go. Darren Bent. Exactly that. I, I think everyone knew that it was going to be a tall order for, for West Ham to go to the and get a result. And they haven't managed to do that. I know there's still a little bit of time left, but you'd expect, certainly in this type of scenario, Manchester City don't let uh, Leeds at this slip. Um, but listen, all Arsenal could do again, I mean, there's, there's no point even talking about the result at the Etihad unless Arsenal do their job here. And, and Gabriel going off there, I mean, Zinchenko was one I would have probably would have brought in anyway if Gabriel had got injured, just because I thought Tommy Asu defensively is very good. But I think they're just missing that little bit of an extra body in the middle of the park. And that's something that Zinchenko does for me really, really well. Well, they need to score and they need to score quickly in order to up the ante and put the pressure on Manchester City. Manchester City with a two-goal cushion there at the Etihad Stadium and heading for four in a row. A miraculous achievement, really, looking to win their eighth Premier League title. They're six in seven seasons. Only Manchester United have won more Premier League titles than that. It would be their tenth top division title. Here's Trossard inside the penalty area as, again, the air gets sucked out of the Emirates Stadium as realisation dawns that Manchester City have taken a 3-1 lead against West Ham United. It means that no matter what Arsenal do here, they cannot catch them. But they can't catch them 
whatever the result of the Etihad if they don't win here yeah. this might be a tougher game for Gabriel Jesus I'm, I'm looking at Arsenal Trossard has been brilliant the last few weeks for Arsenal had a really good season hasn't really gotten the game enough they need someone who can get the ball 1v1 manipulate the ball make things happen Martinelli into White into the corridor of uncertainty away by Jared Branthway who just about gets it clear comes back out to the near side away by Gay White puts him under pressure and then it comes out to McNeil and Partey's across to shut down an potential, potential release and it goes out of play on this near side we've played 61 minutes it's Arsenal 1 Everton 1 and another goal at Selhurst Park for Talk Sports Jake Robson 63 on the clock Palace 4 Villa nil a hat-trick for Mateta his 16th of the season it started with Henderson throw the ball forward up to Eze he played in Mateta slams it in Palace 4 Villa nil He's 16th in the Premier League, yeah. But that's 19 for the season for Mateta. Who saw that coming? I certainly didn't. I mean, I, I heard people talking about him saying he's a good player, but he needs to be put in the right system. He needs to run a games, and boy, has he taken advantage of that. Crikey, just a bit. There's been a goal at Bramall Lane as well, Adam Bridge. Uh, Sheffield United nil, Spurs three. A beautiful goal as well. Back to front move from Tottenham Hotspur. Finished off by Kulisevsky. It was after it was worked beautifully down this left-hand side. Madison's ball in was the decisive ball. And although he got a hand to it, Fodderingham couldn't keep it out. And that is the three points wrapped up. And fifth place for Spurs. Sheffield United nil, Spurs three. Absolutely. Here is Martinelli down the right-hand side trying to get into the box. And it comes out towards the near touchline. And uh, it's cleared away by Everton. Ghana into uh, Adrissa Ghana Gay. And then on to Calvert-Lewin on this left-hand side. He goes careering down the left touchline. 63 gone 1-1. Calvert-Lewin trying to shoot into towards the far corner. And it's a good effort, which is saved really well by David Raya. It's a little bit too close to him, really. But he did enough to spring across and catch the ball in the sky. He certainly had to extend himself. Did a really good save, and you don't see many keepers hold on to it. He, he flew across, managed to hold into it, not parry it away, and he started Arsenal off on a counter attack. But again, Adrissa Garner gay for me has been brilliant for Everton. Breaking up play, driving forward. I know he, he gave the ball away a bit earlier when he should have passed the ball, but he has been fantastic. Erdegaard out to Rice over on the far side, heads the ball down, and then nudges it back to Zinchenko. Back in field to Partey. Partey across to Erdegaard, who's in the dead centre of the Everton half of the field swings it out towards Martinelli they need a goal Arsenal just to increase the pressure on Manchester City clips the ball into the near post and what is Pickford and Bramthwaite doing and getting each other's way is the answer and it pops off the shoulder of Pickford and goes behind for a corner yeah lack of communication there Martinelli being direct which is what you want to see him do get at the fullback get crosses in and I think Bramwick at the last minute just ducks his head and that catches Pickford by surprise and he almost just does well to divert it because that's going in the back of the net well he only ducked his head because the keeper was shouting at him he Pick wouldn't have done so otherwise well, Pickford's always shouting isn't he so <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean uh, here's the corner away to our right hand side those two could be in the England defence the way things are going at this moment in time here is Erdegaard in towards the near post it's flicked by Tommy Asu it hits the defender and goes out it's another corner to Arsenal team that scored more goals from corners than anybody else in the Premier League and if they were to score another one they'd, make, uh, they'd, they'd go out on their own as scoring the most goals from corners in a Premier League season they're currently level with Oldham on 16 at this moment in time here is Erdegaard with the delivery in towards the centre of the six-yard box, away by Branthway. Comes to Declan Rice, a right-footed shot towards the far corner, but it's too high. Well, there's worry with the Arsenal set plays there because someone who, who's exceptionally good at getting on the end of things is Gabriel, and he's no longer there now. So they might have to be a bit more precise with their delivery, but again, it's another ambiguity for a goal, and Declan Rice with a strike there from about 20 yards out. Probably should hit the target with his quality, but again, Arsenal just need to up the tempo a little bit. I just wonder whether or not this game is sort of highlighting just how... Arsenal will need to bolster their squad next summer if they are to try and compete again for the title. Saka not being around today does harm them, does deny them one of their most creative outlets, not just in terms of assists, but goals as well. He's got 20 goals this season. Exactly, yeah. And he is, that's a massive blow. You can't, you can't kind of overplay that because he's been so good for Arsenal, so consistent. Even when he's not playing well, he always puts a shift in. And I think that's why Arsenal fans really, really appreciate him. But you're right, you take him out of the team, Martin, Martin and Lee's not his best game best season this season in terms of numbers but Saka just gives you that little bit of extra so yeah you're probably right there son uh, Arsenal 1 Everton 1 the latest odds are available via Betfair where you can back right now Arsenal to win the game at 22-11 on uh, Everton 19-2 to win the game the draw is 15-8 to don't forget Betfair are paying out winning bets at 90 minutes with 90 minute payout applies to match odds 90 market 
four markets with the 90 icon. It's all thanks to Betfair 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Goal at Kenilworth Road, Jeff Peters. It's Luton 2, Fulham 4. Harry Wilson has created two. He's hit the woodwork and now he's curled a beauty into the top corner. They're going goal crazy here. Luton 2, Fulham 4. It could be worth a couple of million quid as well to uh, Fulham, the way results are going at this moment in time, because they're going to jump up into 13th position, which is good news for them. Crystal Palace going into the top 10, uh, the way things stand. When they sat Roy Hodgson, they were still worrying about relegation. Here's Martinelli into the penalty area. It's off the bar from Havertz. Comes back out to Trossard and put behind by... uh, Well, it was going to be put behind, but the offside flag went up before it could go out for a corner kick from Garner. But there, a great opportunity for Havertz, who got up above everyone, when really I don't think anyone expected him to. He certainly wasn't offside when he headed the ball. It cannoned off the crossbar, but I do think that Trossard was offside when it came back off for the rebound. Goal at the G-Tech, Talk Sports, Ollie Kling. And it's game on now, Brentford 2, Newcastle 3. This is an absolute stunner from Johan Wisser. He picked it up on the edge of the box, onto his right foot, and bent it, posting in, into the bottom right-hand corner. Brilliant goal, game on, Brentford 2, Newcastle 3. Well, that means there might be some anxiety amongst the Newcastle support if there was a goal at the Amex Stadium. And you know what? There is Alfie Reynolds. Yeah, Brighton nil, Manchester United won against the run of play. United lead, a long ball forward, not dealt with at the back by Brighton. And it is Diego Dallo who slots the ball home. 17 minutes to play, Brighton nil, Manchester United won. Back to Selhurst Park, uh, where Jake Robson, Aston Villa like being in the top four, but they don't like the word five. They've given up here, 69 on the clock, Palace 5, Villa nil. they just had a goal disallowed Palace, but now Eze with his second of the game, again slammed in from 20 yards, Palace 5, Villa nil. And a goal at Turf Moor, John Dunn. Where it's Burnley 1, Nottingham Forest 2 with 20 minutes remaining, Josh Cullen from the edge of the area, a wicked deflection to beat Matt Sells, it's Burnley 1, Forest 2. Back here, substitutions awry, ML Smith Rowe hasn't scored a goal for Arsenal for a very long time. April 2022, the last time he scored, he's coming on to replace Thomas Partey and Ben White is coming off to be replaced by Urian Timber and here the reception for him, his first appearance since August the 12th. And they forgot to announce him on the PA, which is not very helpful. Here we go. And that's all we were waiting for. He's only been on the pitch for about 30 seconds. <laughs> and PA man's obviously got to the end of the season as well. Yeah, disappointed as well, isn't he? <laughs> Devastated about the City result. <laughs> yes. He's probably got TalkSport on in one ear, to be fair to him. <laughs> uh, ball cleared away by Pickford. And Arsenal need a goal just to put pressure on Manchester City. Uh, Durian Timber's been on the pitch for 30 seconds, but he's already lost his boot. Ball broken away to the left-hand side. It's Trossard. Havertz wants it played in behind. Trossard still travelling to the edge of the box. Goes on the outside of Coleman. Coleman does brilliantly just to show him out towards the far touchline. And it's cleared away. They have offered Seamus Coleman a new contract his contract is out at the end of the season when he was given that contract he said yeah, I'll never think about it let's go off to the Etihad Stadium talk sports Alex Crook 20 minutes to go here Manchester City 3 West Ham 1 the applause you can hear is because Nathan Ake is about to come on to get a bit of a pre-FA Cup final fitness test he's replacing a Kanji City pressing for the fourth goal to make absolutely certain of the title Haaland has had an effort blocked he also narrowly failed to connect with a header at the far post from a corner and Kevin De Bruyne from a corner had an effort cleared off the line Manchester City 3 West Ham 1 the story in the Premier League looks like this Manchester City are winning the title Arsenal coming second Liverpool and Aston Villa are already sure of their fate in third and fourth Tottenham are going to finish fifth because they're winning away at Sheffield United and winning well. No anxiety for Ange this afternoon. Chelsea, as it stands, going to finish sixth. They only need a point to do so. They're leading 2-1 against Bournemouth. Here's where the anxiety is at this moment in time. It's with Eddie Howe and Newcastle supporters. Manchester United 
can guarantee European football if, if Brentford score a goal at the GTEC Stadium. That is where the most jeopardy is at this stage on final day Sunday at this moment in time. A Brentford goal, they're 3-2 down to Newcastle, means that Manchester United will jump above Newcastle from 8th into 7th. And although that won't guarantee European football for Newcastle if they finish 7th, it will for Manchester United because the only other team that can nick it is Manchester United. Here is Erdogan inside the penalty area, shooting towards goal, cleared off the line by Branthwaite. Emil Smith-Rowe is there and it's blocked from the penalty spot and then cleared away by McNeil towards this near side. Saliba back down the right, Arsenal coming forward again, 71 minutes on the clock. And the Eddie had Jurian Timber tries to get the cross in, forces a corner on the near side after his cross, deflected behind off Ashley Young. Really good defensive work from Everton there, throwing their bodies on the line, but also work it really well again down that left hand side. I mean, it's Emil Smith Rowe rolls in Leandro Trossard, he cuts it back into a really good area, similar to the goal that Tomiyasu got. And Odegaard takes the first touch, composes himself, but I think it's Tarkovsky who throws himself at it and makes a really good block again. So Everton have been so good at that today, putting their bodies on the line and blocking shots. Odegaard will take it near side, this corner left-footed into the six-yard box headed away by Tarkovsky and then further away by De Cure, with Smith Rowe actually running onto the ball and then the miscontrol by Trossard allows De Cure to come away with it and then Everton stealing forward on the counter-attack and then that's a poor challenge by Timber who fells McNeil like he was Timber and it's a yellow card yeah, and a bit naughty that from Timber, to be fair. I know he's obviously excited, first game back as well. Um, fans are happy to see him. He's got a little bit carried away because Dwight McNeil got his body into a really good position and they're about to drive away and he's almost lunged from behind and, and caught him and Seamus Cole was there screaming because he wasn't happy with the challenge. Arsenal 1, Everton 1, Talksport with Enterprise Rent a Car, whatever the mission, home or away. Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. Both teams have hit the post in this game, but it's 1-1. Calvert-Lewin in the first half. In the second half, header from Havertz which hit the woodwork and came out. So we've got 17 minutes plus stoppage time still to play here. Manchester City leading by three goals to one, but they've got a dangerous free kick, Alex Crook. Yes, they have. It's Manchester City 3, West Ham 1, as you say. Kevin De Bruyne, who is looking for his 150th club career goal, has left it for Foden. And Foden coming in from the right-hand side, left-footed, caught me out, caught Ariola out as well. And he's fired into the side netting. That would have been a hat-trick for Foden, who once again has been City's star man. They are heading for a fourth successive title. Manchester City 3, West Ham 1. Emil Smith-Rowe has a shot from the edge of the penalty area which takes the deflection and goes behind you. Chimiti is coming on for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. They are going to offer Dominic Calvert-Lewin a new contract. But if he doesn't accept it, the plan is, I hear, that they're going to sell him because he'll go into the final year of his deal. So he is waving away to the uh, supporters over in the far corner and they will hope that that is not the last time they see him. Well, this could be interesting. I told you if Brentford were to get a goal in the game against Newcastle, things would change significantly for Newcastle United, who were facing a bit of anxiety. But have they eased that? Ollie Klink. They've scored, Sam. Brentford 2, Newcastle 3. It's Bruno Guimaraes who may well have wrapped up the points here. Alexander Isak fizzed in a free kick from the edge of the box. It was parried by Flecken. And there was Bruno to tap it home. And that could secure seventh for Newcastle United. Brentford 2, Newcastle 4. Uh, the very, uh, <laughs> Premier League, as has been its one all season, is going goal crazy again. Six in the game at the GTEC. Here's Garner down the right-hand side. Jamiti is steaming through the centre. They're on a counter-attack, Everton. And they're moving into the box. Jamiti trying to get the better of Saliba. Good luck with that. And it's cleared away. I think they just put the floodlights on here. I wonder what that was. All of a sudden, it was like someone... Was, you know, like when you're on your <laughs> MacBook or your, or your laptop and you press the brightness key and it goes up quite significantly very yeah. quickly and it goes from being very dark to being very bright. That's exactly what happened. It looked like that in front of us here at the Emirates Stadium but I think it was the floodlights coming on it must have been it got a little bit dark overhead they decided that uh, floodlights were required on a Sunday afternoon in May here is Havertz skipping past one challenge then a second but the referee's already blown the whistle before he smashed it into the net so that won't go uh, anywhere that's almost summed Arsenal up a little bit today is that that real lack of quality in that final third because they've got into good areas and it's that last pass where they either give it away or they overhit it 
it's not been quite the usual fluid self. I know nerves have come into it, a little apprehensive about what the results going on at the Etihad, but I still that that's irrelevant. Arsenal had to win this game today to st even stand the, the slightest of chances, and at the minute they're just faltering when it really matters. Yeah, they are. Uh, Mikel Arteta has always wanted to ensure that his team keeps their performance levels high, even in critical stages of games and seasons. They've improved in that area this campaign. There's a been more of a maturity about them. Whereas last season, I think they lost their heads a couple of times, especially in that running. But I think today you can almost forgive them a little bit. Once they, those two goals went in early for Manchester City, you can understand why their level has dropped. It can't in these circumstances. If you want to win the title, you've got to just keep going, keep going, keep going. Because you never know what can happen at any given moment. You know, if there's a cap, happens to be a counter-attack, goalkeeper brings down uh, a West Ham forward, a penalty, goalkeeper gets sent off, things change very quickly exactly exactly. and last season I mean, at least this season sorry they've taken it to the last game of the season as you said there I think they lost two of their last five back in the last season whereas this one they've won five straight in a row coming into this game they're full of confidence it was an occasion to kind of be joyful yes you're hoping a little bit that maybe Man City dropped points but the likelihood of that was never really going to happen but at least end the season on a high by doing your job and then making Manchester City win it rather than having a kind of starting performance against Everton and Manchester City not really having to do too much to win it here is um, Martinelli down the right-hand side into uh, Urien Timber, back to Rice. Rice out to the far side and Zinchenko. 77 minutes gone. And uh, we still, so how long is that still to go? 13 minutes plus stoppage time. We've had 35 goals already in the Premier League. I think we only need nine more for the record. which is quite something. Uh, here is, uh, we'll check that out. Here is Gabriel Jesus who comes on for Trossard. And they make another change. Martinelli and Trossard just have a little brief conversation. Jesus will go out to the left-hand side. Martinelli will stay on the right. Martinelli actually made a really intelligent movement there. Timber didn't see him. And he still holds on to the ball with a throw-in, level with the edge of the penalty area on this near side. It is Arsenal 1. Everton won. Arsenal won't win anything unless they win here. You never know. Manchester City cruising, leading by three goals to one up at the Etihad Stadium. Here is Zinchenko, out of the far side, collected by Jesus. Edge of the box, turns it back to Rice. Rice being chased by Decoure. Trossard's season is over for Arsenal. There's still more games to come on the Talksport network, though, that is for sure, including... The Europa League, Conference League and Champions League finals. The FA Cup final next Saturday. And the Championship playoff final next Sunday, which is Leeds against Southampton. So you've got Manchester City against Manchester United in the FA Cup final on Saturday. And then Leeds, Southampton on Sunday. Belting weekend. Just a bit. Unbelievable weekend that football. Unbelievable. The FA Cup final, great occasions. And the playoff final at times can be a little bit... But it's such a huge game, such a huge game. Martinelli down the right-hand side, crosses the ball off the post! Well, he attempted to cross it, I think, but it came off the junction of crossbar and post and caught out Jordan Pickford and then went out for a throw and over on the far side. That was so close. Did it take a flick on the way through? I don't think it did. Really good play for Martinelli. He's done that a couple of times, getting to the byline, going to Ashley Young 1v1 one, one one, and Jordan Pickford screaming at Ashley Young, stop showing him down the line. Because every single time, that, and that's the... That's the positive of playing a right footer on the right-hand side, is that they can get to the byline, they can get crosses in. They can't always check back, so good play for Martinelli, but just lack bodies in the box. 1-1, one, one, 10 minutes to go. It's still Manchester City's to lose. Arsenal's defence, which has been outstanding so far this season. Three-quarters of it basically played the whole of the, the season. Saliba has got 10 more minutes to play, to play every single minute of the Premier League campaign. The only other player to do that this season is... Max Kilman, and I just wonder whether or not Mikel Arteta has already turned his thoughts to acquisitions in the summer to strengthen further this squad squad that is going to get well, 87 points at this moment in time and not win the title might be 89 if they can get another goal here here is Tomiyasu forward he runs the Japanese international down the left side Everton have retreated now into the edge of their own box very very deep goes back to Zinchenko and then into Rice once again 
Rice to Jurian Timba. Then out further wide, where it's collected by Martinelli. Martinelli to Jurian Timber once more. I wonder how much of a miss he'd be. I think he might have played left back at times, actually, if he had been in the uh, in the team from the beginning of the season. Yeah. Foul by Anana on uh, Erdeg uh, on Erdegaard. That means there's a free kick on this near side, the right. Yeah, I can expect Odegaard to put this ball in with real quality. And then this is his type of areas, that kind of loopy, hangy one that he puts to the back post with that left foot in swinging as well. I mean, it's just enough of an angle to be able to put the cross in. I think five yards inside the pitch, you'd have, have had to have a shot on goal, but from this kind of range here, you could just leave it in that area between the penalty spot and six-yard box. Erdegaard, left-footed, drives the ball into the box, headed away by Anana. It's flicked by Smith-Rowe to Zinchenko, and he'll go back to his goalkeeper, so we'll go down to the Amex. And there's been another goal for Alfie Reynolds. Brighton nil, Manchester United 2. It's Rasmus Hoyland coming off the bench and putting the result to bed. A nice finish, one-on-one -on -one with Steele to send the Manchester United fans behind the goal into raptures. They will start to turn their attention towards the FA Cup final with just a few minutes of the 90 to go. It's Brighton nil, Manchester United 2. Winners against Newcastle in a big game on Wednesday and winners today down at the Eddie Haddon, two goals in two two games for Rasmus Hoyland will do his confidence the world of good ahead of the FA Cup final live on TalkSport next Saturday afternoon looking forward to that it's going to be cracking I heard that in the championship final by the way player final Martin O'Neill is going to join us for the commentary which will be great here is uh, Gabriel Jesus across to Erdegaard Jamie O'Hara and Gabby Agbonlahor on uh, the final phone in in just a few hours time here's uh, Smith Rowe with an effort on the volley, hitting the ball into the ground and it bounces up and hits the top of the crossbar and goes over. Great play for Martinelli again, facing up the fullback. I just wonder if Smith Rowe could have took a touch. I mean, he, he, he drives it into the ground to be fair. I was wondering if he could have took a touch with his instep and then just maybe he could have gone either way, bent it or smashed it, did whatever he wants. But it's a really good play for Martinelli again. He's done that about three or four times in the second half. Getting at Ashley Young, getting at Dwight McNeil, getting across him. And again, it drops to, to Emil Smith Rowe and he just snatched it a little yeah. bit. He didn't catch it right, did he? No, and as I said, I think in, where he was in the, on, in the penalty area, I think there was enough time for him to bring it down as well because he, they couldn't have touched him in there. So again, another opportunity gone. Final word, 6.30 tonight, Jamie O'Hara, Gabby F. Bon Lahore, 0371 722 on the text. Trans Europe Express with Danny Kelly tonight at 9 o'clock as he takes you and rounds up all the ladies from European football. And tomorrow, the Premier League All Access podcast will review all the action. Alex Crook, Mickey Gray and I from outside the Etihad Stadium. <laughs> That'll be available to watch on YouTube on uh, Monday afternoon. I'm going to check that out. You should. <laughs> Especially as I'm going to make Alex Crook squeeze into a medium-sized Chelsea shirt because he lost the bet. I'm definitely going to watch it then. Yeah. What was the bet? Who'd finish higher? Chelsea or Man United, yeah. yeah. And he got it wrong. Well, this one Again. Uh, 84 minutes gone. Free kick over on the far side. Erdegaard to take it left-footed. Drifting the ball in towards the centre is Martin Erdegaard. Attacking it is Urien Timber. Away by Branthwaite. Good towering header from the uh, central defender. And it's collected by Erdegaard again, who moves up to the edge of the box, tries to combine with Zinchenko, then gives the ball away. And now a chance for Everton to break, and it's four on two. And this could be damaging for Declan Rice. Senses the danger, waited, and picked the pocket of the on-rushing Chimiti with such precision. Here is Martinelli at the other end, into the box, ball deflected away. Martinelli should have sent it back to Erdegaard, who was free on the edge of the penalty area, but didn't. And that was a disappointment, but Declan and Rice, take a bow, fella. That's all we'll need in the summer. He's been outstanding, Declan Rice. Also, I've watched him do that time and time again for us this season, getting forward, then having to run back to intercept and then counter-attack again. He's been outstanding. It was just the way he just sort of waited like a cobra and then sprung and nicked the ball superbly I mean if you're the Corey you're not happy because again he sprinted 70 <laughs> yards and then had to turn around and sprint 70 yards back and chase Martinelli but here is Martinelli right side into the area Havertz back to goal gives it to Erdegaard making space he sends it to Zinchenko left footed deflection into the air and then Branthwaite will head it further behind and it's out for a corner them two obviously communication doesn't work because Branthwaite and Pickford again I thought if Branthwaite left it Pickford comes and gets it and claims it goes down and they get up the pitch what, what do you reckon it is the accents one's from Sunderland one's from Carlisle do you think that's sort of difficult for them to understand I don't know what it is but it's been a couple of occasions now where the cross has come in no real threat and because they haven't communicated it's gone out for a corner and 
cause your, your, your team more problems again corner far side Declan Rice you know how good they've been from corners can he swing it in and cause more issues 86 on the clock towards Tomiyasu headed away comes out as far as Sinchenko now it's on to the left and Jesus into the penalty right foot is sharp deflected over the top by Branthwaite it was arrowing into the far corner but Branthwaite was there a magnificent header prodding the ball over the bar superb defending as a defensive pair in Tarkovsky and Branthwaite they get their head on absolutely everything everything we take him to the Euros Branthwaite yeah I would 100% here's Erdegaard with a cross in towards the edge of the six yard box flicked into the air and away by Branthwaite Arsenal need a goal from somewhere if they're just to keep it in the mind of Manchester City that they can't let off but at the moment they're struggling to get one against this resolute and stubborn Everton team we told you that Everton are difficult to break down and Arsenal certainly struggling to do that they're coming forward again with Zinchenko out to the right Martinelli edge of the box right side he's got three to Aimer it's the Hubbard over the bar let's go off to the Etihad Alex Crook two minutes of normal time to play and West Ham United have just scored their second goal of the afternoon it came from a corner James Ward-Prowse on the right hand side bundled in at the far post by Thomas Socek if West Ham score again and Arsenal get a late winner the title will be heading to North London Manchester City 3 West Ham 2 just imagine if West Ham score again and Arsenal don't they would have thrown it away exactly that's exactly why Arsenal have to get their their end of the bargain done don't worry about their result at West Ham I mean the fans now are getting up they've heard the result but they're still not doing their job they've got to win this game and then whatever will be will be but unless they win their, their, this game and get another goal it's all irrelevant anyway there's only two and a half minutes to go Arsenal need a goal let's go back to the Etihad oh no has it been disallowed Alex Crook yes it has it's still Manchester City 3 West Ham 1 the City fans on their feet Socek actually turned the ball in with his arm pretty clear decision for the VAR the goal has been ruled out and Manchester City are still heading to the title 3-1 they lead here come Arsenal Jesus through the middle into Erdegaard the captain he takes on the goalkeeper rolls it to Havertz and now the pressure is back on Arsenal finally in front with two minutes to go Erdegaard rolled it through to Havertz inside the area and Havertz hoisted it home Finally, the Gunners have found their shooting boots. They lead by two goals to one. If only, if only, just moments beforehand, VAR hadn't have been the joy killer again. We might have had a grandstand finish. It was, yeah. And I mean, if you're Sean Dyche and you're Ashley Young, oh, you're not happy with him because he goes for a crossfield pass when it wasn't really on and it was really well cut out by Gabriel Jesus. And he drives with it and he rolls a lovely pass into Odegaard. And I'm not quite sure what he does with it because he doesn't finish it. He takes one touch, then another. And then he almost mishits it and it drops to, to Kai Havertz. And he's not going to miss from there. He smashes it in. But Ashley Young, really poor. Someone with so much experience. He goes for a pass that's not really on. But Gabriel Jesus, you know I mean? He, he reads the situation really well takes it with him gives it to Odegaard and, and, and the rest is history but again Ashley Young oh, really poor from him crikey we're checking a goal for possible handball here as well five minutes of added time at the end of the game are going to be allotted I think now we're checking for possible handball here let's see where the handball took place it has to be it's got to, it's got to have taken place from Kai Havertz otherwise no point oh VAR is going to have a look at the monitor brilliant it can only be Jesus because well, it can't be because the man who put the ball in the net was 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 Havertz unless they're saying it was a deliberate handball by Jesus somewhere in the build up to it we haven't had a replay of it let's have a look now so it is as you say Jesus but that's got to be deliberate that's not deliberate handball that not is not deliberate handball so it shouldn't be penalised he doesn't mean to get an advantage from that that should not be penalised it's not the next act before a goal is scored it has to be the person who puts it in the net He's miles away. There's two, three passes before then. It's not a clear and obvious error. Do you know also as well, Sam? He's trying to get out of the way because I think it's Tarkovsky comes in with his stud showing. It's not a clear and obvious error. It's too far away. There's several phases of play beforehand. The ball goes to Erdegaard. Erdegaard plays it against the goalkeeper. Give the goal. He's given the goal. He's overruled the VAR. He's told him to do one. 
thank God for that, Michael Oliver, showing a pair of cojones and correct, telling correct the decision. VAR, Stuart Atwell, no, don't get involved. It was not a clear and obvious error. It wasn't a deliberate handball. We saw that after one look. Why are you getting involved? Exactly, correct decision. Gabriel Jesus, to me, was trying to get out of the way because Tarkovsky's coming in with his studs showing and his arms behind his back, it grazes his arm. For me, it's the correct decision. And it's, it's, nice the correct decision. Of, it's nice to see a bit of common sense. It is the correct decision, 100%. 2-1 to Arsenal, despite the VAR trying to make a name for themselves at the end of the season. 92 minutes on the clock. We're five into five minutes of added time. There'll be a lot more than that now. It'll be almost six. Arsenal lead here. Newcastle beating Brentford. They'll finish seventh. Manchester United's result, irrelevant now. They've won. They've beaten Brighton 2-0. Nottingham Forest have beaten Burnley 2-1 again doesn't mean anything Luton officially relegated to the championship because of Nottingham Forest's result but they were down a long time ago Manchester City about to win the title still not 100% sealed because if West Ham do get two goals then it will go to Arsenal instead but two goals in stoppage time from West Ham at the Etihad I wouldn't have thought so I wouldn't have thought so at all. We've averaged 11 minutes and 38 seconds added on over the course of the season. Over three minutes more than last season. That's contributed to an extra number of goals, but I don't think there's enough time for West Ham to get to. Not now. Here is Martinelli, down the right side, dancing into the box, playing the ball through the six-yard box. It hits Branthwaite. I think he followed through and caught Branthwaite as well. The ball pops towards this near side, and it's out and away for an attack by Everton on this near touchline. Declan Rice trying to charge back down the right. Ball given away by Martinelli, who hasn't had his best game in an Arsenal shirt. Cleared away by Ashley Young, and then Emil Smith-Rowe has it. It's going to be Manchester City's sixth title in seven years, a run of dominance only realistically that's featured twice in English football history. Liverpool picked up seven top division titles in nine seasons between 75 and 84. United winning seven of the first nine Premier League titles between 92 and 2001. It's also going to be an awesome foursome for Pep. That hasn't been done before. Those statistics just underscored their might, their dominance, their impact. Arsenal winning here, but the title is gone. They've won 16 of 18 games in 2024, Arsenal. And it's still not going to be enough to squeeze past the unbudgeable juggernaut that is Manchester City, who are just about to win the title in front of Alex Crook. Still got a minute of added time to play. It's Manchester City 3, West Ham 1. Champions again is the tune ringing around the Etihad amongst the home supporters. There was some anxiety when Thomas Socek looked to have got it back to 3-2. Seconds before Arsenal scored what should be the winner at your game. Only for VAR to rule that out correctly, it should be said. Four handballs. City two up in 18 minutes. Phil Foden with a first half double, including a brilliant curler into the top corner with just two minutes played. West Ham back in the game three minutes before half time when Kudus scored a brilliant overhead kick, but Rodri's goal on 59 minutes into the bottom corner from just outside the box really settled the city anxiety. Stewards are lined up all around. The pitch here at the Etihad, Manchester City fans, no doubt, as they seem to do every season, ready to pour on in celebration. We have literally seconds remaining. David Moyes looks like he is already shaking hands with members of Pep Guardiola's backroom staff. The one negative for City, Phil Foden, hobbling off, holding his back after landing awkwardly. They've got the FA Cup final next weekend. Gareth Southgate will be watching that with angst as well. We've got a delay here because some Man City fans behind the goal are already pitch side of the advertising hoardings. The City players are over in that far corner. Erling Haaland amongst them. Guardiola very animated, basically telling them to get back to their seats. So, drama right to the end here on Talk Sport. Kevin Nolan, the latest of the West Ham management team to congratulate his Manchester City counterparts. Pep Guardiola, arms by his side, looks distinctly unimpressed with those City fans away to our right-hand side. I think the referee might be tempted just to blow up here into the 96th minute City leading by three goals to one. There is the whistle. 
and those celebrating City fans do pour onto the pitch. It's a magnificent four in a row for Pep Guardiola's superstar Manchester City side. A feat never before achieved in English football. Kevin De Bruyne amongst those City players who were gathered in a big huddle in front of the technical area. Guardiola out there celebrating with his backroom team. Once again, the blue moon rises in the Premier League. City are champions. It finishes here. Manchester City 3, West Ham 1. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Manchester City. A fantastic achievement, never achieved before in English football history. They are champions for the fourth time in a row, despite the endeavours of Arsenal. Arsenal, who have won more games, scored more goals than any other Premier League season. But there will be no repeat of 1989. Arsenal have done their job. They have won late on, but it is not enough. It is agonising for Arteta and Arsenal, but it's going to be connect four for Manchester City. Arsenal have given their all. Last season, they were top for 248 nights and didn't win the league. This season, 76 nights. Manchester City will be there for the crucial 78th time this season. Enough to win them the league. The Arsenal players bent over double oxygen sucked out of their lungs in disappointment they've given absolutely everything but it still wasn't enough 89 points posted and they'll only finish second Darren Bent yeah I mean it's been a fantastic season for them I mean we speak about getting to 89 points and not winning it that is the juggernaut of Manchester City 91 points been absolutely fantastic again and what's impressive about Manchester City is season upon season, the hunger's still there, the, the desire, the, they want to strive for greatness, they want to win more, they want to win everything, and that's fair play to Pep Guardiola. He's created that culture down there, but for Arsenal, it's been a really good season. I like the way the fans are really appreciating the players, because they've given it everything. They've been pretty much faultless in 2024, and it still hasn't been enough. They've won 16 of 18 in 2024, and it's not enough to win the title. It's amazing form back by these supporters who have really bought into the Arteta effort and the ethic that he's brought to the club they embrace on the touchline the backroom staff they know they've given everything every sinew has been stretched every morsel of effort has gone their way the inquest will start as to when the title was lost Adrian Durham's convinced they should have been more aggressive at the Etihad Stadium but there were defeats here to Aston Villa to West Ham United there were points dropped away at Fulham earlier in the season but the inquest is for another day appreciation for Arsenal will follow in the next few moments they'll get an app, a lap of honour and a chance to say thank you to their fans who have adored them over the course of the campaign but it is a campaign that ends with nothing once again the Premier League the dramatic twist is its trademark but no plot twist today Arsenal 2, Everton 1, but thanks to Manchester City's victory, it's City who are the champions.